The views and opinions in this program are not those of CESA 7 or Spectrum. like to call the uh, public engagement session to order. Um, if we could start with roll call. Beth, can you help us with that? Absolutely. Warren? Here. Bucker? Here. McCoy? Here. Zitnikow? Here. Smith? Here. Shelton? Here. And in Hoopa? Here. All right, all seven board members are present. Um, Obviously, we are here uh, as, as a public engagement session, an opportunity uh, for all seven board members to hear from members of our public regarding our uh, GBAPS forward plan in, in regard to the board meeting that we have tomorrow night in how to re, uh, restart our schools um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so with that being said, um, we have about 80 people who have registered to speak. We will be those people to um, to join us here by phone. Each speaker will have a total of three minutes. Um, I will keep a timer. I will give you a one minute warning uh, when the timer is getting close and then obviously when the three minute timer is up. Um, we are going to have to stick to that time very closely because we do have a lot of people who want to speak. So in the interest of equity for everybody, um, we're going to hold people to three minutes. And with that also, um, board members will not be able to respond. So we'll, we'll move through it uh, uh, in that way. If there are any follow-up questions, whether from the board or if somebody has more comments to share, certainly uh, email or uh, personal phone call uh, tomorrow uh, would be the best way to do that. Um, after about 20 calls, we will take a five minute break, just allow people to stretch the legs, use the restroom. Um, and after uh, about 20 calls or so, I'll ask uh, Vice President Shelton to facilitate uh, a few calls um, throughout the process. So with that being said, um, we'll move right into our first call. Uh, Mr. Jensen, are you there? Brad, can you hear me? Oh, did you say Jensen or Jameson? I said Jensen. Is it? Oh, sorry. That's no, my no, phone. That... I apologize. <laughs> no, that's all right. Well, Brad, if you could start by uh, introducing yourself, giving us your name and address, and then I will start the three-minute timer. Sure thing. Uh, my name is Brad Jensen. I live at 223 North Platten in Green Bay. Um, so I apologize. I, I've been working on this all day. <laughs> So let me know when it starts. You can go ahead. All right. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board and those listening on YouTube. I come to you with information for, to prove that, prove that the decision to suspend in-person schooling or requiring masks in school is based on fear and not facts. I'll be able to forward links upon request for the sources of my assertions. I want to first address the thought that we are exposing our children to harm from this disease. Based on the data provided by the CDC, a total number of 244 people under the age of 25 have died as a result of COVID nationwide, less than 0.2% of all COVID deaths. Other illnesses are more deadly. Pneumonia is twice as dangerous and influenza is 10 times as dangerous to our kids. Yet we don't shut down schools or change our daily lives because of those two diseases, diseases that already have vaccines. By comparison, in the same time frame of 2017, roughly 4,000 children took their own lives. There's also evidence showing that children are not passing it to adults or teachers. In an article published in the journal Pediatrics, Dr. William Ratzka said, the key takeaway is that children are not driving the pandemic. After six months, we have a wealth of accumulating data that shows that children are less likely to become infected and seem less infectious. 
It is congregating adults who aren't following safety protocols who are responsible for driving the upward curve. And then per NBC News, the number of people who have been infected was underestimated by a factor of 10. This means that there are roughly 47 million people with the virus. That brings the total death rate down to less than half a percent of those infected. The death rate of COVID is also being overstated. The CDC shows people are dying from other things besides COVID, but are being counted as COVID. Cancer, sepsis, and injuries account for over 21,000 of those deaths, none of which are related to COVID itself. If these three categories account for more than 13% of the total deaths of COVID, what other information is present in the death count that is inaccurate? And then finally, the World Health Organization published a report that, among other things, reviewed transmission rates of as- or from asymptomatic people. Four studies show that around 2% of asymptomatic people pass it to others, yeah, one, and those with symptoms time. spread it to others up to 15% of the time. We're also seeing news focusing on positive cases, but should be focusing on hospitalization. As of August 1st, roughly 310,000 instances are labeled as COVID-related, and that's under 1% of all positive tests. We're letting our fear drive the national narrative, not facts. Our national response to COVID has been more akin to the H1N1 outbreak of 1918 that killed 50 million people globally. After further analysis, the global death rates for COVID are closer to influenza death rates. There's no reason our children should be kept at home wearing masks or uh, disrupting our ability to earn a livelihood. How long will we wait? And how long, how much harm will we cause to our children while we wait for a vaccine that may or may not arrive? Smallpox took generations to eradicate, and the influenza vaccine is only 40 to 60% effective. If we wait for a cure, the damage done to our children's health, welfare, and education could be irreparable and have adverse impacts felt for generations to come. The children need to go back to school. Yep, you're good. Thank you you very much for uh, sharing with us, so we appreciate you calling. Eric? Eric? Yes. Um, I've been told from uh, some community members that the live stream isn't Running, are we live streaming this? Let me check YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can see it on YouTube. You yes, can? it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, maybe it's just something that's happening with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Jensen. And I apologize. Right. Our, thank you, Mr. Jensen. Our thank sec- you. Our second caller had accepted and then she subsequently dropped off the line. So I'm going to move to the next one and then and then work back I apologize right. thank you mr. Jensen or thank you our second caller had Barbara are you there I am here if you could mute your computer, we're just getting a little bit of feedback. Yep, just did. Perfect. All right, um, if you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then I will start the three minute timer and I'll remind you, uh, let you know when you have one minute left. Thank you. Barbara Conniff, 2651, Seneca, Dry- Seneca Court, Green Bay. I am the parent of a Green Bay District High School student. Parents should have the ability to choose whether to start the new year in the classroom, just as parents already have the option of choosing virtual education. While I appreciate the school district's concern for the potential of being a contributor to COVID-19 community spread, the primary purpose of the school district is to educate our students. If all businesses and services use the gating criteria identified by school administration for their operations, we'd have no on-site access to hospitals, medical clinics, supermarkets, retailers, businesses, or services because they'd all close their doors and go online. Yet these employees still report to work using safety precautions and the public continues to be served in our current COVID-19 environment. I'm comfortable with the classroom education plan presented last week and would happily send my student in a mask doing anything required to the classroom on the first day of school if given the opportunity. The Centers for Disease Control mortality data note mortality rate for those ages 0 to 24 is extremely low. American Academy of Pediatrics does state that although children and adolescents play a role in amplifying influenza outbreaks, to date this does not appear to be the case with COVID-19. So as the other caller stated, these children uh, appear to play less of a role in spreading this infection. 
The American Academy of Pediatrics states that the benefits of on-site education outweigh the risk of COVID-19. Creative scheduling can be used to limit the number of middle and high school students who come in contact with each other and with staff throughout the school day by establishing learning cohorts assigned to classrooms. Staff who have medical reasons for limiting social contact can obtain letters from their physicians and apply to human resources for workplace accommodation. Parents are motivated to help. Please welcome us to the table as you continue to refine the educational plans. Students who don't thrive online deserve to have the access to the structure and support that the classroom provides. Please open the school doors on September 1 to give us this choice. One minute. Thank you. I'm complete. Thank for, yeah, thanks very much, Barbara. All right. Josh usually is going to start dialing up the next caller uh, when the previous person has a minute left. So if somebody does uh, end early, there might just be a little lag before the next person comes on. Okay, it appears that that one is not answering. I'm going to be moving on. Okay. Can we go back and try calling the people that we lose or yeah. yep. we yep. don't get this yep. time so, to cycle them back? Yeah, absolutely. If uh, somebody doesn't answer who's on the list, we will call them back. Um, okay, thanks. And it looks like we've got another no answer, so I'll be moving on. And I'm keeping track of the ones that are yep. not answering. Yes, Christina. Yeah. Uh, someone just texted me that it said that the live streaming is titled as eight one twelve, but it's incorrectly labeled on the YouTube live stream. Thank you. I'll. I, it looks like it's eight one twenty. Um, I'll adjust that. Okay. I know people are watching though. That, that last. Comment. Yeah. They oh, were okay. just. Someone just texted me to said it just might. You know, if people are looking for it. Hopefully we'll hit our stride here. Thanks for your patience, everyone. We've had a few go to voicemail so far here. I am moving on to number seven in the list, Eric. Okay. Oh, you're following along. Thank you. I see what you're doing here on this sheet. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mr. Weber? Yes. 
Perfect. If you could uh, start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then I'll start the three-minute timer. I'll give you a warning when you have one minute left. Thank you. Uh, my name is Martin Weber, and I live on Beach Lane in Green Bay. Um, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to give me uh, uh, to let me speak. As you are all aware, I have sent multiple links uh, for studies and articles. Uh, these have included studies stating that kids are extremely low risk for contracting and tra transmitting the virus, articles discussing mental health issues, the CDC's recommendation that schools open, and finally articles regarding schools opening around the world with little or no issues. Should schools not open, not only will kids suffer from insuffi insufficient education, they will experience long-term negative effects of insufficient mental, emotional, social, and physical development. The damage that will be done far outweighs the minimal, minimal risk of the virus. Even two days a week to start is far better than no in-person learning. Please do the right thing for our kids and vote for the hybrid model at the very least. And I would like to add the very first caller, he mentioned um, other uh, illnesses that kids are at more risk for. Um, let me just put things into perspective and I will uh, end the conversation. The flu kills five times more kids than the coronavirus, yet nothing, there's, there's no panic, schools don't shut down. And, you know, we're while well, we are looking at full shutdown here. So please do the right thing and vote for in-school learning. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mr. Weber. All right. Josh is calling in on the next one. I'll just add that if you are uh, watching on YouTube and have registered to speak, uh, please have your phone by you and be prepared to answer a call. Josh will uh, be calling you when it's your turn. Um, realize that it's, it's difficult to know exactly what time we will call, but uh, if you can have your phone ready um, and, and answer, that'll help this process go smoother. Katie, are you there? Katie, can you hear me? Hello. Katie, hello? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. If you could start uh, by introducing yourself and then uh, giving us your address. You have three minutes to speak, and I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Okay. Um, my name is Katie. I live on Shea Avenue in Green Bay. Um, I apologize. I didn't have anything prepared. Um, I just wanted to... Um, provide my support. I understand this is a really difficult decision. Um, I am in a position, a privileged position of being able to decide offsite, um, but I think it's important um, that we also keep in mind faculty and staff that will be um, exposed to the um, coronavirus if we continue, and I think playing it safe and being maybe fast followers once we identify how schools are doing because there are studies that say that some are doing well, some aren't doing so well. Um, I think it's better to wait a little bit, um, practice social distancing and seeing how it works in our community before going full steam ahead. Thank you, that's all. Thank you very much, Katie, for taking the time. Thank you. Have a good night. Josh, I would just add that it seems some people are going to take the three minutes. If you can just kind of judge. Um, doing my best. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing great. I just, I don't always get to the, the minute warning. Heather, can you hear me? I can. 
All right, perfect. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then you have three minutes to address the board. Uh, I will let you know when you have one minute left. Very much, thank you. Um, Heather Longley, I'm at St. Francis Drive in Green Bay. I'm a mother of four middle, uh, middle school children. One is actually in high school in front of me. Um, and a former PTO president. I just advocate for two options to begin on September 1st for the middle and high schoolers. And I choose those two options to be obviously a virtual model for the entire school year, as well as a hybrid model. 66% um, of the parents requested in-person learning. And additionally, of those no's, which were 5%, and the uncertain 27%, 40% said they would be comfortable with hybrid model. So it would satisfy around 79%. Please note that the survey also noted 80% of the teachers surveyed uh, would return to staffing in the fall. Classes should begin on the 1st. Classes should be offered every other day in person, half the school on one day and half the school on the other day um, to reduce gaps in learning. The students' home days, they can have virtual gym, band, choir, art, small teacher-led study groups, along with teacher office hours where the children can schedule individual time. Masks should be required for, throughout the year. There will not be a wide vaccine provided during the school year. The supporting reasons for this is the student body choosing the hybrid option would be broken down into two groups. Assuming 70% of the children return to school, on any particular day we would be running at a 35% capacity, which is doable. This also leaves less time between teacher and student contact um, versus the, claim, the plan that you're looking at, which is two days and then five days of no structure. The reduced, the reduced time away from the school, the more engaged the students will remain, um, it will help them with re returning to some sorts of normalcy as well, which is good for their mental health. This also helps us to teach those without electricity, One minute, um, those please. that are homeless. Okay, it also gives us short intervals of time um, from being in person again for that wellness check, checks. If we use a 5% positivity rate for 14 days benchmark to return to school, we are not acknowledging that there is a tainted pool as the only people that are being encouraged to be tested are those who are symptomatic or have been contacted in contact with somebody who um, has, has tested positive and couldn't take a good portion of the school year. So these are my reasons to choose a hybrid option for the school year. To be honest, 35% capacity every other day. The amount of time you would get with your teacher, it could be the best year in education that my kids have ever had. Thank you very much for your comments, Heather. I appreciate you calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Ryan, are you there? Yes, sir. If you could start by introducing yourself, uh, first and last name and your address, and then you have three minutes to address the board. I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Okay. Uh, my name is Ryan Vanis. I live at 1409 9th Street in Green Bay. Uh, my children are one primary school one secondary uh, she's transitioning to middle school this year which will be odd um, and I guess I am far less prepared than the rest of the people that came on with statistics and numbers I guess my reason to address the board would be more directed at why this was the choice if the survey is essentially a vote of your student body because my daughter also filled out a survey that indicated learning at home was detrimental to her. Why? Excuse me. Why are we not following 
the layout that the parents and teachers both supported. That's an overwhelmingly mass majority of the student body as well as faculty. I would also ask at this point that you consider what keeping some kids home will do to them. It's not necessarily about the long-term effects, but school is an escape from a horrible home. I would also ask that why we're not following the opening plans and recommendations of the surrounding districts like Ashwaubenon and Pulaski, Howard, and even ones maybe a bit further away. And why are we not looking at the statistic of this virus in the matter of deaths One minute, in school age children? I really honestly was not super prepared but I feel like I was given a chance to voice my opinion on getting my children back to school where they thrive. They look forward to going to school. They look forward to seeing their friends. If social distancing, if the CDC guideline says social distancing or a mask if you can't social distance, why are our students and children being asked to do both or nothing at all. If you can mask, school should be able to open. If I can take them to Walmart and I can take them to Target and I can take them to swim, why can't they go to school? Brian, that's the end of the three that's minutes. Thank, thank you very much for calling. You are. Bye bye. Okay, working down the list here again. Yep, no problem. Just a reminder in case anyone tuned in late, um, we're, we're limiting people to three minutes only because uh, we have about 80 people who have registered to speak. Um, and also because of this, uh, the board will not be uh, addressing or responding to uh, any of the comments. Certainly uh, can follow up by email or by phone um, if, if there's more that needs to be shared. Um, but we're going to keep moving through the list. We'll be making phone calls um, to people. So if you are on the list and, and waiting to speak, um, please have your phone uh, handy and ready to answer. Um, and after we've gone through the first 20 or 25 calls, we'll just take a five minute break um, and come back and continue to go through the list. If we do call and you don't answer, um, we'll, we'll move you down on the list and call you back um, later on. Sean, are you there? Yeah, this is Sean. Perfect, thank you for calling in. Um, if you could start by uh, giving us your first and last name and your address, and then um, from there you have three minutes to speak. Um, and I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Okay. Uh, my name is Sean Conway. My address is 614 Mather Street, Green Bay. Uh, thank you for letting me speak today. I just wanted to um, let the board know I support virtual learning until a vaccine, so a vaccine is produced to ensure that our students and teachers are safe. 
I have I have two kids, uh, two daughters that are K through six right now, and I do not want to see them um, getting a sect of COVID. So I do support um, the virtual learning. My only concern is is that one of my children, and again, my concern for all children is um, that I want to make sure that students with special needs have access to resources um, they need to ensure their learning and are not left behind. To have one daughter that's in special education. Um, and just making sure that that's taken into account. Um, my second concern is that I don't want to see what we saw last year with our children's lessons plans, especially for grades K through six. I'd like to see a more unified approach and more teacher involvement in the learning process um, virtually. If that's what the board does officially decide. Again, I don't think sending the kids back to school is the right direction because I don't see kids, uh, K through six, even my two daughters, sitting in a classroom wearing a mask eight hours a day. Um, when we go to the store, they can barely keep the mask on while we're in the store, and that's only like less than 20 minutes. So to keep Tell a child to keep the mask on eight hours a day, uh, being a socially distant um, between their friends, it's just not going to happen. So, again, again, thank you for hearing my concerns. I appreciate the time that you've given me. And again, our kids are our future, and we should do what's best for our kids and for our teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate you taking the time to call. Thank you. Uh, is this Jeremy or Becky? Becky. Becky, thank you very much. Uh, both names were listed, so I wasn't sure who was going to be calling. Um, if you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, you then have three minutes, and I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Okay. Go ahead when you're ready. Hi, my name is Becky Burnt, uh, 310 Arbor Lane. Go ahead, Becky. Hi, um, Becky Burnt, 310 Arbor Lane. Yep, go ahead, Becky, whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, we are parents of a child with special needs in first grade, and we are concerned about um, her not being able to learn virtually and online. Um, a lot of students are not capable of understanding or following the virtual model, and um, families are not seeing their IEPs being met we didn't see that last spring. Um, it's very difficult to have parents who are working be able to then be the essentially all the therapists and teachers for their children. And we also find a we see a huge value in uh, students being able to learn social skills and social cues, and that can only be done in person and uh, and with their peers. And we're also concerned about the parent and teacher survey that we were all asked to fill out. Um, the results were clearly showed support by both the parents and teachers to go back to school, yet that isn't being considered in the voting. It's only virtual or um, a mix. And we're concerned as to why the survey is being ignored and the results are being ignored and actually ignoring the recommendations of the CDC and the National Pediatrics. Uh, we want to see our child and other families be able to go back full time with masking and social distancing. 
with the option for families to do online learning if they feel that's what's best for their family. Uh, we need to consider all parents and their ability to be home or having to go work to work. And um, we also need to consider the surrounding districts and what they're doing. Other schools are going back K through five at least that amount and then doing part time for the older kids. And I would like Green Bay to consider that as well. Is that all you have, Becky? You still have a minute left. Yep. Yep, thank I'm done. Very, thank you very much for taking the time to call. We appreciate it. Looks like two went to voicemail back to back. Amy, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you for taking the time to call. If you could start by introducing yourself, first and last name and your address, and then you have three minutes to speak. I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Great, thank you. My name is Amy Albrecht, and I live at 3023 Sapphire Drive. Thank you for taking the time to allow parents to speak and to listen and provide feedback. I recognize that you have, a, you have to make a tough decision so with that in mind, I recommend that parents should have the choice whether or not kids return to school. As a parent of a high schooler and an elementary student, I know that my children learn better in an in-person, in-school environment. They're more energetic and are more engaged and feel like they're part of the class and they can contribute. They thrive and are more successful in that in-school environment. I'm concerned as a full-time working parent how do I work and have my children home alone during the day? Does Green Bay have a plan or recommendation on how to provide supervision to the kids during the day? As a community, we are not a one size fits all. And I feel we should have the opportunity to decide if our child should return to school. Allow us to make that decision. And looking at some of the surveys presented, 66% of the parents surveyed stated that they want their children to return to school. 5% said, said that they wouldn't allow their children to return to school, and 27% were uncertain. Please listen to the majority of these parents and allow the children to attend. Allow those 5% to attend online. For my children and for my family, online is not an option. I am not convinced that an online approach would be any better than it was in spring. I've not been provided any information supporting that and truly feel that they will have a better educational experience in an in-school environment. I appreciate your time today and ask that you listen to the majority and allow our kids to go back to school. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time, Amy, we appreciate it. Thanks.
back to back voicemails again. Thanks for your patience, everybody. There's another another one to voicemail. Three in a row. Sorry about this. That's I'm going to try this number. Um, okay. Eric? Yes? Can you remind people to turn their phones on? Turn their ringers on? Maybe they're just missing the call? <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, just, yeah, so just as a reminder, um, we're, we're going through the list in the order that we receive the feedback on the website that, that when people signed up. Um, and so we've got the spreadsheet in front of us. Uh, we'll be calling um, set the ringer on and uh, ready to answer a phone call. Um, Josh will be calling and connecting you with the board. Unfortunately, we couldn't provide a, an estimate. Um, it's hard to say how long people are going to talk. So if you're on the list and waiting for a call, uh, please have your phone handy and ready to answer. Eric, can I also yeah. add? Um, that it, I'm hearing from people that the call's coming from some of the, that might look like it's out of state. Ah. So that it's, so kind of pay sure. attention to Because it, it's coming through the Zoom system. So right. it would definitely be right. a number that you wouldn't recognize. That's a good point. It, Thank it you. might look like a telemarketer or a political call, things people are avoiding. Those wouldn't, those wouldn't happen. No. Political calls. All right, we got Abby here. Abby, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem. If you could start um, Abby by Vang. Yeah, go ahead. You got the. Got <laughs> Abby Vang, 1009 Coleman Street, Green Bay. Uh, good evening. I'm a proud advocate for my students and educator from Washington Middle School. I'm here today to speak to you about the start of the fall 2020 school year. I would love to welcome my students into my classroom this fall. However, I'm greatly concerned for the well being of all my students. I'm an English language teacher who works with students from marginalized populations every day. My specific concern is for the well-being of my students of color and my students who are economically disadvantaged. The CDC states that long-standing systemic health and social inequities have put many people from racial and ethnic minority groups at an increased risk of getting sick and dying from COVID-19. While one can make an argument that a disease does not discriminate, systems do. Families living from paycheck to paycheck who are poverty-stricken are at a higher risk of contracting COVID. When news broke of the 147 plus COVID cases linked to processing companies in Green Bay, the first people that came to my mind were my students and their families. It is not a surprise that COVID-19 has affected families of color more disproportionately since many of them are overrepresented in essential work environments. According to the Department of Public Instruction, 55% of, of the students we serve in Green Bay schools are categorized as ethnic minorities. 55% of the students in our district face a higher chance of contracting COVID just because they're not white. Additionally, 59.4% of the students in the district are categorized as economically disadvantaged. 59% of the students we serve are at a higher risk of contracting COVID just because their families did not make enough to be considered middle class or above. And I shouldn't have to tell you that if a student or family falls in both of these categories, being Native American, Black, Hispanic, Latino, Asian Pacific Islander, and being poor, their risk for contracting COVID are even higher. I'm asking you to keep our students in mind as you vote tomorrow. Our students who speak languages other than English, whose families may not have contacted you due to a language barrier. Our students who are new to this country, who fam whose families may not have contacted you due to a barrier in accessing technology. Our students whose families you may not hear from because they just trust you to have the safety and best interests of their student at the forefront of everything. 
One minute, Abby. We were elected to serve all our students and families, including those of diverse ethnic backgrounds and socioeconomic standing. Now is the time to show our students and families that you see them and you value their lives. Our district embraces the diversity represented in our schools, but if we truly value the diversity in our district, now is the perfect opportunity to act upon your words. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Abby. We really appreciate uh, your time tonight. Julie, are you there? Yeah, I am. All right, Let me just turn off my YouTube here. Yep, no okay. worries. Thank you for yeah, taking the um, time. Could you start just by yeah, introducing no, yourself? So, Go ahead. Sure, yeah, I'm Julie Hager. I live at 2446 Bluestone Place, Green Bay. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm really happy I wasn't number 80 on your list. Um, so yeah, I prepared a little talk here. Um, don't worry, I don't have statistics. I have three children, two of which go to Langlade Elementary, and both myself and my husband, we work full time. We cannot live on one income. We've ran the numbers and it doesn't work. The public school system is the last and only publicly funded support system that we have. We have no other government supports. We have no family nearby to help, no one. We tried and failed miserably to keep up with virtual school last spring. Virtual school, it's just, it's not the same. Not for young ones, it's not. And let's not kid ourselves, this option only serves to make us feel like we are meeting the bare minimum criteria of public education. But we know that's a lie. Truth be told, we don't even know if the two-day in-person model does a darn thing to slow transmission rates. It's completely arbitrary based on our feelings the expectation that cases will go to low or zero is also arbitrary, and it's an unrealistic measure that may never be attained. And as a parent, I cannot plan a life based on that criteria. School is so much more than learning facts. It's seeing faces, smiles, giving hugs and high fives. It's really about connection with human beings face to face and being in a group, being in a tribe and learning from and with that tribe. School board members, if you do not offer full-time school and the mask mandate is indulged more than a month or so, you leave me no choice but to unenroll my children from the Green Bay school system. And right now, the institution is completely failing my family as it is so many others. I ask you to take a deep, hard look at who these decisions are made for. Are the children our priority? One are minute, they? Please. If someone told you a year ago today that we would have a viral strain around that's more contagious than the flu but doesn't seem to affect children much at all, and you were supposed to plan for that, would you ever in a million years decide to close in-person school and make children wear masks? What about finding the vulnerable staff population and helping them boost their immune systems and offering them capacities within the school? Virtual or early retirement? What about showing the kids about nutrition and exercise and positive thoughts and sleep and how that makes us stronger? This is not the path I want for my children. It does not serve them to live in fear and to live for the fear of others. Please, please consider all the options. What if we offered all the teachers 20,000 more a year to return? I would be super fine with that. They deserve more money. I would pay more money for that. Whatever it takes, let's just get our kids back. And please don't send out an email survey, send a text message survey to all the 
to all the parents. Email doesn't work. I guarantee you that the majority of them will say, yes, we want full-time in-person school. I really also have some tangible options I can share with you and I'll send them by email. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Julie. Appreciate you calling. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Elizabeth, are you there? I am, yes. All right, thanks. If you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then I'll start the three minutes. Okay, good evening. My name is Elizabeth Schnelzer. I live on Valley Heights Drive in Bellevue. I am mother of a five-year-old uh, scheduled to attend kindergarten in the fall. My husband and I are both graduates of public schooling from kindergarten through our undergraduate degrees. I have a human biology degree with a health science emphasis. My husband has a master's in business. We both work full time. I have the luxury from working from home. My husband, as many other parents do not. My mother is a teacher, as are many of many other of our family members. And we also have the luxury to hire someone with a teaching background to be available for our infant and our five-year-old should schools be closed in fall. We truly value and understand the blessing that education is specifically our public school system. With that said, I would like to cite the article that was posted by the CDC titled, The Importance of Reopening America's Schools This Fall. I think it perfectly encapsulates what, what is the main concern on everyone's mind, which is the safety and the long-term effects that this will cause to our children. Um, I would argue that mo for most children, a school setting has more influence on a child's life, health, and overall well-being than their home. The resources that are provided are much outside of purely education. The food programs, special education services, counseling, safety, physical activity, team building, social interacting, focus on relationships, and providing opportunities through music, art, sports, videography, shop class, all of which would be greatly affected because of one reason, which is a virus that has been proven to have inaccurate data and affect every individual differently, which currently has a death rate of under 2% in Wisconsin. The current leading cause of death in the state of Wisconsin for children is unintentional injury, which will likely increase with the loss of teacher supervision. The one leading minute, cause Elizabeth. of death in adults is heart disease. If kids are at home immo immobile and without physical activity, it will contribute to obesity, heart disease, metabolic disorder disorders like diabetes and other conditions that are preventable. The motor skills of our young children will not be a priority, not to mention the mental, emotional, and social disorders that will last these children a lifetime because we are implementing virtual learning sessions during the most impressionable times of their lives. Professional educators need to be educating. While I have a college degree, as does my husband, we are by no means educators. Daycares, summer camps, summer sports have all remained open along with gyms, bars, manufacturing plants, event centers, and rioting. Seeking guidance from institutions who have supported the importance of children going back to school in session like the CDC. Um, also, I know this has been discussed, but interpreting Elizabeth, the data Elizabeth, from the, the survey. The, are you there? That's the end of your three minutes. I'm sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to call in. If you have other feedback, uh, feel free to email it to us. I will. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Marta, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking the time to call. Uh, introduce yourself, your address, and then I'll start the three minutes. Hello, my name is Marta Michalik. I live at 214 Lori Way in De Pere, and I am speaking this evening as a concerned community member and also as an employee of the Green Bay Area Public School District. I support the recommendations by the Green Bay Area Public School District to begin the school year with the off-site model or the virtual model. The reasons I support this model are the following. As of today, August 2nd, 2020, the positive COVID-19 infection rate in the state of Wisconsin is 9.6%. The school district has worked with medical professionals in our community, regionally, locally, 
to determine that it is not safe for our community to return to, to in-person learning until the COVID-19 infection rate has dropped below 5%. Um, and if you've been watching the numbers, you can see that the positive infection rate has not decreased. Um, sending students to school becomes a public health issue. It's not going to be about it's not going to be about convenience for parents or staff or students. And I, for one, as a staff member, want to be able to return to school in the sense of normalcy, <laughs> but School will not be normal this year. It's, it's an impossibility. If we look through the lens of public health, it is the safest and best option to return remotely until our numbers are controlled and until we can find, figure out a way that we can safely introduce students to learning. Um, there are many unknowns in regard to this virus and new information is being discovered every day. Um, I'm going to point to a study by the New England Journal of Medicine that states the need for increased testing, which could occur on a daily basis that would catch the majority of infectious people and provide daily knowledge to provide infection, to prevent infection from other people. Um, this, these tests aren't approved by the CDC or the FDA, so it's not going to occur until we have more medical research and knowledge that will allow that to happen. One a study minute, published in the, um, thank you. Um, another study concluded that infected children have at least as much of the coronavirus in their noses and throats as infected adults. Um, there are limitations to this data, but the takeaway is that we can't assume that just because kids aren't getting sick or very sick that they don't have the virus. We just simply don't have enough information. And I think the most responsible choice is to have virtual school. The behavioral habits of our young children in close quarters in school raise concerns for additional spread within our community. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Marta, for calling in. We appreciate it. Jacob, are you there? I am, just uh, getting my YouTube turned down here. Hang on. Yeah, no worries. Uh, when you're ready to go, introduce yourself, your address, and then I'll start the three-minute timer. Sure. Uh, thank you again. Uh, my name is Jacob Pratt. I live on Beta Street in Green Bay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just going by the survey that you guys put out, you know, 66% of the parents want their children to go back. 80% uh, of your staff want to return to class. Um, I mean. Teachers and students are willing to return. Back in March when the schools closed, we were promised learning material so that teaching could continue. My son only received workbooks that had already been done. This upset him to the point where he stressed out and thought he did something wrong. This wasn't the fault of his teacher and staff. It was because supplies simply ran out. Um, we were told that there would be online sessions so the teacher could engage with the students. In his class, my son was the only one to attend and therefore no teaching could be done as a result. Online learning only works when you have a dedicated teacher and a dedicated student. A child at home simply can't focus enough to stay on task and is understandably and distracted by their environment. I am not a teacher. I'm a mobility technician. I send my child to school because I know the teachers there are better at teaching than I am. I would never expect someone to know how to set up a set of hand controls without training, and it shocks me that you would think that I could do the same excellent job that your teachers could without the proper training. The word burden has been tossed around Know, burden on the parents. I don't think that's correct. The proper word would be responsibility. It's the responsibility of the parents to send their children to school and the school's responsibility for teaching them. Forcing parents to stay at home and teach is simply not possible for some families, my family included. I would love nothing more than to stay home and spend every day with my child. 
but as an adult, certain sacrifices must be made to provide for my family. If daycares are open without restrictions and are not causing a problem. Other school systems are opening back up. And it confuses me why Green Bay wouldn't even consider it finished. The fact of the matter is we aren't going to see a vaccine for two to five years. And parents in your district simply aren't going to wait. And we'll find another district to go to. So please vote for in-person, in-school learning. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob, for taking the time to call. We appreciate it. Thank you much. All right. Dave, are you there? I am. All right, if you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, I'll start the timer at three minutes. Okay, uh, my name is Dave Richmond. I live on Oakdale Avenue here in Green Bay. I'd like you, thank you, uh, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to express my view in regard to the upcoming school year. I have read the district's plan to reopening this year, and I agree that the kids getting an education is essential for their growth. But I disagree with some of the ideas proposed on how to achieve that. First and foremost has to be the health and safety of everyone attending, <clears throat> everyone attending or working at the schools. The district has gone to great lengths to keep visible dangers out of the schools with locks and cameras and background checks on volunteers. So I trust you will do the same for this new and deadly illness. The environment in which we live today with the COVID-19 is like nothing we've ever seen before. We know so little about it and there is no cure for it. What we are left with are the simple defenses of masks, distancing, avoid large gatherings and hand washing. We should rely on the science and not the opinions. This has nothing to do with encroachment on freedoms, but everything to do with the health of our community. There have been so many stories of summer camps, high school parties, and other activities where nearly all the attendees have been affected. How can, school dis how can, this, how can this school district guarantee the health of our children when classrooms are enclosed? How will you keep the kids' masks on? How, do you, how will you determine who is sick and who is not? And what about the ventilation systems? There are currently too many unknowns, and what if for me to have confidence that the children are reasonably protected from this in, invisible danger? I think most responsible way forward is to begin the year virtually. That way we have time to better understand how to protect them and implement policies as a guide to guide us. I, have an, I understand that there are children who live in challenging situations and we must account for this in some way. I think school lunches can be provided as they were last year or in partnership with the state for a monthly food car allotment. We must also remember flu season is not One that minute, far please. off. Okay. Which presents the possibility of the perfect storm. In a normal flu season, you can read stories of emergency rooms overflowing with those with the flu. Can you imagine what they'll be like with COVID-19 still running loose? I think given more time, we will have a better understanding and possibly a vaccine so it's not out of the realm of possibility that the children return to the school after the double threat has passed. I would suggest at the time it be a slow reopening with blended education of going to school on certain days and virtual on others. I do not envy the board of having to make this critical decision. Please use the sciences to guide your, to guide you, and I thank you for this opportunity to stay with you. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate your calling. Thank you. John, can you hear me? Hello. Ken. Hi, John. If you could start uh, introducing yourself uh, and your address, and then we'll start the three-minute timer. Okay. Uh, my name is John Yankee. I live at 319 14th Avenue here in Green Bay. I um, want to apologize quick. We're out on a bike ride with my son because that's one of the things we have had to do to accommodate my son as services have shut down. So I'm speaking from the lens of disability where I just want to make sure that the district understands that we need to meet the goals that are in IP. And Sometimes that's going to mean, even if we choose to go virtual, that we're going to have to have um, some in person because speech therapy, old, that done virtually. So 
that's the only thing I want is to make sure that whatever plan we have, have finds a way to meet the needs of the IEP because the federal government has determined that IDEA has not been suspended. And so we still need to continue meeting the needs of the IEP. So um, again, I apologize for any background noise and that's all I have for you guys tonight. Thanks for taking the time to call, John. I appreciate it. Yep. Bye. Bye. Ned, can you hear me? Sure can. All right, thanks for taking the time to call. If you could start just by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then I'll start the three minute timer. Sure, Ned Dorf, uh, 1300 Block, Emily Street, Green Bay, teacher for the district. I uh, just wanna thank you all for sharing the presentation with the entire community. Um, Reimagining school is a fitting title. We need to constantly reimagine what school can be. And I believe that we are pretty innovative here in Green Bay for creating different pathways uh, for students' families. Um, I'm happy to see it noted that we all want to be back with our students when it's deemed possible and that we attend not just to the academic, but also to the emotional, social, and wellness needs of our students. I'm glad to see there's input from many sectors of our community in the plan. I appreciate the listening session tonight. I have found the board and superintendent highly accessible through the process. And I know that your final decision is not going to please everyone. It's not going to be ideal for anyone, uh, but it would be unfair to say that you've been unwilling to listen. I'm a teacher and a parent who's grown convinced over the course of the summer that we will not be at a healthy enough place to return to school right away. My wife and I will not be sending our own children to school this fall and will instead opt for virtual offerings from the district. I intend to take what I've learned from teaching virtually this spring and summer and apply it to a more robust experience for my own students in the fall. Uh, please note that for improved engagement and attendance, I highly recommend that we start and end meetings with social emotional support activities, for example, sharing circles. Um, if we do return to on-site learning in September, I can say with certainty that the five through eight year olds I work with will have an impossible time maintaining appropriate social distance, wearing PPE correctly, just making it through the day in the bizarro version of on-site learning that we've seen recommended. Several of you may know that we don't even actually have desks where I teach, we use tables, so the spacing of six feet wouldn't work, even if we could fit all the kids in the room with a six foot distancing requirement. There'll be social emotional repercussions no matter what we do, including if we return to a no contact on-site experience where staff members and students will periodically disappear from the classroom due to COVID exposure. It will also take a physical toll on anyone who contracts the disease, be it students, staff, or family members who have COVID brought home to them from the Petri dishes that are our school environments. It's neither physically, economically, or emotionally healthy to rush back into on-site learning. Staff members compelled to work on-site should not be docked from their earned sick time if they are forced to quarantine as well. One minute. I'm, I'm pleased there may be on-site services for recent immigrants, students with IEPs, students who need ELL services, and possibly others. If performed in small group settings, I believe that could be done safely, and we need to do better for those students. Thank you for providing Kajit's Chromebooks and food to students, including to my own children this summer. Um, it reassures me that students who sign up for off-site learning will not lose their spots at their schools of choice. This applies to all of my students and to my own children. And I think what's best for staff and kids is for us to come back together as soon as it's deemed safe by public health professionals. Thank you for taking their advice into consideration when setting benchmarks for a safe return. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Ned. I appreciate you taking the time to call. Thank you. In case anyone's keeping track, that was the 17th call, um, 29th on the list. So we have 
about 10 people who didn't answer. Again, we'll, we'll call those people back after we get through the list the first time. Um, board, how are you feeling? Do you wanna just keep pushing through? Do you want a five minute break? Everybody doing okay? Eric? Yes. Can you periodically remind people about the fact that the number might be coming up and looks like it's out of state? Yep, absolutely. Um, Thank you. Yep, so just a reminder, we uh, are taking the calls uh, in the order that they came in uh, on the website, uh, about 80 uh, total people on the list. Fortunately, we can't provide an approximate time that we're gonna call, so we're just asking that you keep your uh, phone handy, ringer on, and when it, the call does come in, it won't be from a 920 number, it'll be through the Zoom platform, so it'll be uh, an out of state area code. Um, so if you are on the list waiting for a call, please have your phone handy and be expected to, or be ready to answer a, a, an unfamiliar number. Um, this would be a good time to also remind people, um, we are holding each speaker to three minutes uh, simply for uh, respect for the people who are waiting for a call tonight. We do have a, a large volume of people. Um, and the board will not be able to interact with each individual caller for the same reason. Um, any follow-up certainly can happen by email or by phone. Deanna Soar? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. If you could, uh, welcome, thank you for calling. If you could introduce yourself and then I'll start the, the three minute timer and you can address the board. Okay. Um, uh, I, was, I was wondering the possibility of because what I read in the school board um, plan for next school year, I was wondering the possibility to instead students going like every, I think two days per week or three days, I think that's the plan. Why instead we just, um, split it in half days so that that will facilitate for the students the possibility to meet with the teacher and clarify and learn and then going back home with their homework is, is that your only suggestion is that yeah, I, I was suggesting, I'm, I'm basing this on uh, my own experience in Puerto Rico. When I went to school, we had schools that they, they call it interlocking. So they were going from 7.30 to 12.30, I think, or 11.30, and then 12.30 to 4.30, something like that. I, I, I never been part of interlocking program because I was in different programs, but I knew schools work that way and in my impression I think for middle schoolers or even high schoolers having the opportunity to meet with the teacher every day it will be more um, effective rather than only two days per week and then wandering the rest of the week or the opposite, waiting until they have the days to meet and then um, trying to figure out how to do the, the uh, online schooling, which I know it was very frustrated last spring and I understand it was something totally new for everybody. And of course, everybody was frustrated as well. So, um, I, I was thinking the possibility to still go into school but half day and split the groups between a.m. and p.m. instead Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If 
if is that I understood well what I read in the plan at the at the Green Bay Public Schools page. Well, thank you, thank you, Ms. Rodriguez, for sharing your comments uh, with us. Um, if Superintendent Murley and his team haven't thought of that idea, I'm sure he'll be writing it down and it's something that they'll discuss, but I appreciate you sharing your comments with us. Okay, thank you. Thank also, you. I was thinking that considering that it's a limited amount of time, it will be better to just focus on the basic important classes like science, social study, language arts, math, and the rest of it, it could be handled either virtually or on their own. If, if they are interested in music, if they are interested in sports, I think the purpose of the education is more based on the uh, specific um, curriculum for those classes. So. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to call. Okay. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. You're Bye. Ashley, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right. If you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then I'll start the three-minute timer. Sure. I am Ashley Arbuckle. I live at 612 Dulles Drive, Green Bay. Um, I am a full-time working parent at Aurora Baycare, and my daughter is supposed to be entering first grade this year. And Sorry, I'm nervous <laughs> talking right now. But um, my biggest concern is what full-time working parents are supposed to do during um, this proposed virtual learning. Um, I have read through all of the plans and I don't know how working parents are supposed to um, go through this proposed virtual learning. My daughter has been in summer school this year um and all of it takes place from like 9 a.m to noon which does not work for us and when i try to do stuff at night like it's she already missed all of the learnings and has to watch um virtual sessions of stuff and i honestly feel like she is going to be missing out on her education um if she does not go back to school in person and i'm just wondering what all of us who work in healthcare full time are supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, and I think that's something that needs to be thought of by the board. Mm -hmm. My cousin is actually a principal in Arizona in Scottsdale. And he has, they've considered that and they're having um, separate like virtual offsite charter sites that have like a teacher's aid helping students of parents who work full time um, teach the kids and help them through the virtual learning. Because some, for some of us, this full time virtual learning model isn't an option. If we decide to do that, we're gonna lose our health, which isn't an option for us. And so it's either this or transfer to another school district, which I don't want to do because I think Green Bay is awesome and has better potential than what um, is going on right now. One minute, Ashley. Um, I think another thing is that there are other low-income students that their parents need to work to cover the cost of their houses and food and I think that's something that needs to be considered. I work in the hospital. I work on the COVID unit. And like, yes, it's scary. I get teachers are scared. But I feel like it's something that, like, when, when is it going to be okay to move on? When is it going to be okay to go back? Because I feel like it's going to probably get worse before it gets better. And our students need this education. My daughter needs this education. I'm essential. So why is my child's education not considered essential? Because I feel like it's not being treated that way right now. And I, I get, I appreciate all the effort that teachers and principals and everybody has given. 
but like there needs to be an option for full-time working parents because the virtual option that's given is not sufficient for yeah, full-time working parents. Okay. Yeah, I, I appreciate, appreciate you sharing your comments. I'm sorry, that's three minutes, but your, your points are well yeah. taken. If you have anything else, please send it our way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to uh, hand it over to uh, Vice President Shelton to facilitate uh, the next 10 or so calls. And then when she's finished with that, we'll take a quick five minute break. Thanks, Eric. I'll give you a chance to catch your breath. Thank you. <laughs> you did a nice job. doing a great job, Christina. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've hit a, a string of a few in a row here that um, are going to voicemail. Thanks, Josh. We'll just, we'll, we're patient. We got another voicemail, so we'll just move on to the next one. Just an update for everyone, as Eric has been mentioning, if you miss our call, we will circle back to you. So hopefully we'll catch you on that try. Christina? Yeah. Can you mention the... Out of state or out of... But it might come up out of state. Yep, might be out of state, may not look like a 920 number. Yep, have your phone volume up and on. Have your phone ready. Hi, Natalie. Hi. Hi, this is Christina Shelton. Um, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, give us your address, and then you'll have three minutes to speak to the board. Wonderful. My name is Natalie Shikoski. I live at 790 South Vandenberg Road, Green Bay. I'd like to thank everybody here. I know that even though we may have differing opinions, 
everyone has our students' best interest in mind. I'd like to draw our focus to the mental health of our students. My daughter, as well as many other students, especially teens, have been extremely depressed during this isolation. My daughter loved attending school in person and she worked very hard to get good grades. During the months of off-site learning, she really struggled. Her eyes hurt from looking at a screen all day and she got headaches. She felt confused, frustrated, and disconnected. She cried and gave up. Her grades went down and she really took that to heart. We became very concerned for her well-being. I have talked with many parents whose children have had experiences like these during the months of off-site learning. I know that what my daughter needs and what many kids need is to interact safely with real humans at school. Our students deserve that as a choice. Green Bay has already granted parents the choice of off-site learning if they choose. Parents like me deserve the choice to send our kids to school. I'm urging the board to take our students' mental health seriously and vote for the blended model. Thank you. I'm very proud to be part of a community that cares so much about our children. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks for taking the time tonight. We appreciate it. You have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, Stacy. Yeah. Hi, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. You have about three minutes to speak and you can go ahead and introduce yourself and give your address. I'll give you a heads up when there's about a minute left. All right, sounds good. Go ahead. My name is, my name is Stacy Reed. I live at 1016 Neville Avenue. And I'd like to start by saying good evening board and members and thank you for your time and opportunity to speak. I am a parent to elementary students at Elmore Elementary on the west side of Green Bay, and I'm speaking to you today to express my concern for the pandemic that has now turned into a social issue. There are other districts close to ours that are going back full time and blended to allow students to interact with their friends and new instructors safely. I, for one, would like to see my children full time, but would definitely support a blended opportunity as the stresses of not seeing friends and family has truly taken a toll on all of us. I have not had a break as I have been working from home with them since March 17th. I am able to work a non-traditional 40-hour work week, 20 hours of which are on Saturday and Sunday. Yes, I just finished a 10-hour shift, allowing me to be home during the day Monday through Friday. The brunt of responsibility of school and distance learning has been mine to bear. I do not have a background in education or child psychology. I am simply a good mom that prioritized her children and adjusted my life to be with them. The stress has not only made my head and home cluttered, it, has, it does not allow me to completely de-stress as I had in the past. I have not had a release from them or the responsibility that comes with raising them. I cannot be a teacher, mom, maid, cook, and entertainer 24 seven without breaking. I am not a fan of the teacher I have to be to get the work done. Stern is simply not my forte. Now my third grader shut off in the spring. She made art at home all the time prior to homeschooling, enjoyed reading for fun, and took pride in the work she was completing in school. Towards the end, I was lucky to have her complete her brother's 4K workload. She stopped her art and no longer enjoy the things she had a short time prior. It took her a month after school was out to come back. I cannot lose this soul again. If we continue to do the recommended actions by the health officials, wearing our masks, staying apart the allotted distance, and conscientiously washing our hands more often than we probably think we should, we can slow or stop the spread in our community. What Stacey, we have is an left. exciting opportunity to teach empathy to our growing, kind kids. Let's run with that. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate your time tonight. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.
Hi, Sarah. Yes. Hi, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. You can, uh, you'll have about three minutes to speak and you can introduce yourself and give your address. And I will also give you a heads up when you have about a minute left. Okay, my name is Sarah and I live on Lincoln Street. And um, for, hello? We're still here. Sarah? Can, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you, Sarah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's happening here. <laughs> um, can you hear me still? We got you, Sarah. Go right ahead. We can hear you just fine. Okay. Um, I wanted to advocate for the kids. Um, Going back to school, while I understand a teacher's point of view, they've been shut down since this started. They've, the fear has been put into them. I understand that they are probably very fearful because they haven't been working since this has started. They have been home. They haven't had to be out a lot. So I understand where they're fearful. So all, all of us essential workers, I am an early childhood educator. We have been open since day one of this. We have been taking in kids. We have not been social distancing as it is not. It's not gonna happen with younger kids. It's not feasible. And it's not how humans are supposed to live. You cannot live like that, especially as young as they are. And we have been open since the very beginning, 30 plus students, school age students in a classroom, not social distancing. And I'm not saying, that you cannot do that in schools. If you can do that, great. But I think they need to be in the classroom. We are already, before this started with technology, losing human face-to-face -face contact, which is essential for people to thrive. And if you're gonna tell me you were gonna shut the doors for my kids not to get an education as a full-time working mom, a full-time working father. You were going to tell us, you were going to shut the doors. We pay taxes to live here, to have educators who support our kids, to make our kids thrive. And if you guys decide to shut down the schools, you come, you talk to my kids, you tell them you will not be for them anymore. You are shutting the doors on them because it is not okay. They need to be in school. They need to be in a classroom setting. I, as an early childhood educator, I will take care. I've been taking care of your little since day one. I need you guys to put a hand in it and take care of my bigs for me while I am taking care of your littles. We all need to put a hand in this to make this work, to keep going. Pandemic, I understand, but we have to keep going. Sarah, you have There's about 15 not seconds be some... left. Okay. Um, and I just actually did one touch point on the Rodriguez person who talked about instead of two days, if you go to two days, doing half, half days instead, five days a week to be more consistent. They are seeing that teacher face to face every day to go through things and then bringing half of it home. Okay. I, I think that actually is a wonderful idea. Thank, thank you, I Sarah. I really that. appreciate your time tonight. I'm sorry we have to end your time because we have so many other people, but thank you so much. You have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.
Hi, Jessica. Hi. Hi, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. You have about three minutes to speak. I'll give you a heads up when you have about a minute left. And if you could start by introducing yourself and, give, and, and letting us know your address. Thanks. My name is Jessica Bodart. I live at 565 Ontario Road in Green Bay. I teach third grade at Dan's Elementary, and this year will be my eighth in the district. I attended Green Bay schools K through 12 and graduated from Southwest in 2009. It was my positive experience as a student that led me to pursue a career in education and I couldn't be prouder to teach in the district where I developed my love for learning. While I want more than anything to be back in my classroom with a new group of third graders in September, I know this is not safe given the increase in COVID-19 cases in our area. I implore you to vote for the off-site model on Monday night excuse me, Monday night, in order to keep students, staff, and their families safe. I have heard many parents say they want their child to return to school as normal, but what many don't realize is that we, what, if we return in person, school will be a very different experience for children. In the blended and on-site plans released Thursday, a school day is described where students will spend the day's entirety in their seats. They will use apps to do math in order to avoid touching shared game pieces or manipulatives, and they will complete written work digitally to remove the need for passing papers. They will eat lunch in their seats and participate in specials from their seats somehow as well. This is not school as students are used to. It's a completely different experience and I truly wonder what that will do to the students' mental health. Let them be in their homes or daycares where they can be comfortable and move around. We can send them some of their activities on paper, which is more developmentally appropriate than sitting on a Chromebook all day. CESA allows students to make videos to demonstrate a math problem using real manipulatives or take a picture of their writing and drawings on paper. These options exist if students are off-site but won't be offered at school. I understand the concern re regarding childcare for working families and I believe this is another reason to make the decision for off-site learning right now. It is my hope that with a month to plan, community groups could work with the district to find solutions for safe, supervised areas for these children to spend time working on their online learning. If you let science and safety guide your decision to vote for the off-site model on Monday, there will be time to prepare. If you Just vote for the minute. blended or in-person models and COVID cases continue their upward trend, families will be left scrambling when buildings close suddenly. Please do not ask teachers and students to risk their families' lives to solve this problem. Please do not cast a vote that ultimately kills some of our students or staff or harms their families. I have served on the academic work group over the past three weeks. We spend our time planning ways for students to receive the same education online that they would get in person. Virtually, I can continue to do the parts of my job that bring me the most joy helping my students make reading games, guiding them to discover math strategies, and making them smile. Thanks to technology and an excellent plan, students will consider their learning safely in the off-site model. Thank you for listening. You have a big task ahead of you, and I surely hope you will let science, not an outdated survey, guide you to make the safe choice for our students, staff, and their families. Thank you, Thanks. Jessica, for your time tonight. We appreciate it. You have a good rest of your evening. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Elizabeth has joined us, Christina. Okay, sorry, I didn't see her. Hi, Elizabeth, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. You have about three minutes to speak and I'll ask you first to introduce yourself and just give your address. I will let you know when there's about a minute left of your time. Thank you so much. My name is Elizabeth Carlson, 374 Moon Valley Drive in Green Bay. Great, go ahead. I, first of all, Okay, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to share our thoughts and opinions. I'm truly grateful for um, each and every one of you taking, you know, countless hours out of your time to make this decision. I can't imagine when you all accepted the position on the board, you thought you'd have to do this. So I appreciate your time, energy, and the hearts that have gone into it. I really believe that the best thing for our kids is to get them back in the classroom. There has been a mental, emotional, and social toll that's been taken on our children. I have a first grader coming in the fall and a 4K student. They don't understand why we have to be at home. We have explained to them there were countless tears that happened in our home in the spring for my then kindergartner, now first grader. The isolation that it's, it's caused and affected um, for all of our students, being home away from their friends, 
away from their teachers. You know, I run a business. My husband is a full-time, has a full-time job, and we are not educators. I have no desire to be an educator. I now respect the education profession more than I ever have, and I truly believe that the best thing for our kids is to be back with their teachers and their friends in person. You guys all, have all heard, and I'm sure read a million times, all the stats. I just don't believe that the cost that this is having on our society is worth it. I believe the best thing for our students is to get them back in person, in school, as often as possible. I really do believe that, that, is, that God's design for our kids is to be together in community, and I really believe that that's the best thing for our kids mentally, emotionally, and socially. And social skills cannot be learned through a computer. Why do doctors tell us constantly to limit screen time? It's because it's not healthy for our kids, not healthy for their minds, for their eyes, for their bodies. I really believe that being back in school as, as soon as possible, as often as possible, is the healthiest thing for our kids. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for allowing all of us parents to share. I'm sure I can't even imagine how stressful this decision is on you, but I just really pray that you make the decision to send our kids back to school. I believe that's the best thing for our community. Thank you, Elizabeth, for taking your time to share tonight with the board. We appreciate it. You have a good rest of your evening. Thanks, you too. Hi, Amy Jo. Yes, that's me. Hi, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. You'll have about three minutes to speak. I'll let you know when there's about a minute left. And if you could start by introducing yourself and also telling us your address. Absolutely. Uh, it's Amy Jo Tim. I live at uh, 107 South Oakland in Green Bay. Um, let's see. I have uh, five kids. Four of them are school age, ranging from starting kindergarten to starting uh, high school. And let's see, all four of them uh, are special needs. Um, I, I do operate and, and own a company here in town who does service um, most of, of Brown County um, and several other counties right now. Um, but we do serve the kids with special needs. Um, and so my main concern, uh, really been going back and forth on this for quite a while, uh, for months. Um, we have been operating at about half capacity uh, since this all started here at, at my center. Um, and we have, we have managed to be able to do it um, without any outbreak, without anyone getting um, ill from this virus. Uh, that doesn't say that that's not, you know, that doesn't say that that's how it's going to be everywhere. Um, but I did hear several other callers who work in different essential positions who have had a similar experience. So I think it's important to mention that, um, that it can be done. Um, but my main concern here in it for my kids and for the kids that I serve is the special needs community has already missed out on so much. Um, they're learning, uh, I would say of the kids that I serve and, and the kids that I have in my home, one of them could potentially do okay with a virtual option uh, with, with one, one of us. Uh, we both work full time, but one of us would, you know, be able to service him. The other three would not be able to. Amy, you um, have about a minute for, left. Thank you. Um, because of that, it, it, it's just really important for me for the board to consider the special needs community and the fact that highly behavioral kids, kids with multiple compounded mental health disorders, autism, uh, nonverbal, non-speaking, uh, do need an in-person option. Um, I do not want to see this population be failed even further. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Amy Jo, for calling in. We really appreciate it. You have a good rest of your night. Thank you. You too. Take care. Hi, Ryan. 
Yes. Hi, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. You have about three minutes to speak this evening. I'll give you a heads up when there's about a, when there's a minute left. And if you could start by introducing yourself and also your address, please. Sure. This is Ryan Meyer, and I'm at 3267 Hickory Ridge Lane. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I know it's a long night for you guys, so we appreciate this opportunity. I know parents are understandably concerned about the safety of their children at school. I'm gonna be making an argument in favor of returning to school tonight. The best available evidence indicates if children become infected, they are far less likely to suffer severe symptoms than adults. Death rates among school-aged children are much lower than among adults. And there have also been few reports of children being the primary source of COVID transmission among family members and are not the primary drivers of spread in schools or in the community, particularly in the context of appropriate mitigation measures, similar to those implemented at essential workplaces. At the same time, the harms attributed to closed schools on the social, emotional, and behavioral health, economic well-being, and academic achievement of children in both the short and long term are well known and significant. Aside from a child's home, no other setting has more influence of a child's health and well-being than their school. The in-person school environment does the following. It provides educational instruction, supports the development of social and emotional skills, creates a safe environment for learning, addresses nutritional needs, and facilitates physical activity. For educational instruction, the extended school closure is harmful to children. It can lead to severe learning loss. Long breaks from in-person education are harmful to student learning. The effects of summer breaks on academic progress are well documented and it magnifies as a student progresses through school. And you have about one some minute. Have, some have limited and low computer access and the damage is hard to repair. Social and emotional schools provide a stable and secure environment for developing social skills and peer relationships. It is particularly important for development of language, communication, social, emotional, and interpersonal skills. If an in-person school environment, in an in-person school environment, children more easily learn how to develop and maintain friendships, how to behave in groups, and how to interact and form relationships with people outside their family. In conclusion, schools provide a safe learning environment for children. They employ teachers and other staff and enable parents to work. Schools also provide critical services that help meet the needs of children by supporting the development of social and emotional skills, identifying neglect and abuse, fulfilling nutritional needs, and facilitating physical activity. And the best available evidence indicates COVID poses low risks to school-aged children and suggests they are unlikely to be major drivers of the spread of the virus. Thank you. Ryan, perfect timing. That was right at three minutes. Well done. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in tonight. We appreciate it and you have a good rest of your, your evening. You too. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for everyone being patient. We're just getting a few voice messages. OK, 
Christina, maybe a, a couple more calls and if we could take just a quick five minute break, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I was thinking two more. Would that work for everybody? Sure. Okay, sounds good. Hi, Craig. Uh, yes, this is Craig. Oh. I live uh, live on Parkwood Drive in Green Bay. Great. Uh, Craig, we're going to give you about three minutes to talk. I will uh, let you know when you have about a minute left. If you could also give us your address and then you can go ahead. Excellent. Yeah, I live on uh, 2776 Parkwood Drive here in Green Bay and just wanted to thank you guys for taking the time tonight to hear everybody out. You know, educating our children is extremely essential and obviously you've heard a number of points and it'd be hard for me to tell you something you haven't heard necessarily, but really at the end of the day, as I said, educating our children is essential. And as a society, we've really stood up over the last few months and recognized our essential workers, whether it's frontline and healthcare. And now that we're about to the point to go back to school, there's nothing more essential than educating our children. And, you know, I hear some of the teachers and the teachers union presidents speak out about the risk to students' lives and teachers' lives. And they say base it in science and the statistics just aren't there. And, you know, you look at the CDC currently uh, between five to 14 year olds, there's about 20 COVID-19 related deaths. But in the same time frame, there's 2000 non-COVID related deaths for kids that age. So my point in that is there's risk in every walk of life and there's going to be no perfect solution, no perfect answer. So I certainly don't envy the position you all are in, but I ask you to please consider the unintended consequences of keeping a virtual learning program in place. Our kids need to be in school. They need the chance to learn. And statistics in this day and age, we can use any of them to our advantage or disadvantage. So in fact, we should look at the other examples around the globe, whether it be Sweden, Denmark, Finland, you know, the other parts where kids have gone back to school. What has happened? they haven't had these mass outbreaks. What's happened in our local community? We've heard some from the childcare facilities. Look at the Y, look at the youth programming, look at the Boys and Girls Club, number of those examples of ways that it's been done safely. And you know, if we're gonna base it in science and take the recommendation please of the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine, when they urge school districts to prioritize reopening, especially with an emphasis on those between the K to five, and, you know, that goes back to the, the five to 14 year old stats that I mentioned with COVID-19. We look around the area school districts and at least getting those children in person so that they can learn. And obviously no situation is gonna be perfect nor easy. I can't imagine my elementary age kids with masks. I can't imagine having the teachers deal with reminding them of social distancing. It's going to be stressful. Everybody Wait, is there's stressful. about 30 seconds so left. Thank you. Please just reconsider the virtual first option and giving full consideration to all the unintended consequences. And I know there was one teacher who talked a lot about, you know, those who are maybe more disadvantaged. And I ask you to reconsider if we keep it virtual system, those even more disadvantaged, that education gap is only going to be further widened if we remain virtual. So thank you for taking the time on a Sunday evening and hearing everybody out. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for your time tonight. You have a good rest of your evening. We'll do one more and then we'll, I'll pass it over uh, back to Eric for a break.
Hello. Hi, Marguerite. Yes. Hi, this is Christina Shelton with the Green Bay School Board. Thanks for joining us tonight. You have about three minutes to speak. I will give you a heads up when you have about a minute left. If you could start by introducing yourself and also sharing your address. Sure thing. My name is Margaret Allen and I live on Roselawn Boulevard here in Green Bay. I am the parent of two children attending school in Green Bay, both of whom will attend Lombardi Middle this school year, and I'm also a reading interventionist at Preble High School. I'm addressing my comments to you all as both a parent and a teacher this evening. While I would dearly love my children to attend school in person at the start of the 2021 school year, at this point, I feel that having my children or any children in buildings is both premature and negligent to their health and safety. Despite the community commentary that children are somehow more resilient to COVID-19, we now know that that is old data. Children can carry, contract, suffer, and even die from the disease. This is true at all age levels, and a tragic example can be seen in the state of Florida where children are contracting COVID at alarming levels. Another point I'd like to make is the argument that our children need to attend school for a sense of normalcy and for their social and emotional well-being. Speaking for my own children and from my observations as a high school teacher for the past 20 years, the kind of school day that we will be forced to endure in order to keep our kids safe will be nothing like what I believe our community perceives. Students will be stuck in classrooms, movement will be extremely limited, teachers and students will be behind masks and far away from each other. This will propagate a traumatic and negative school experience for our children that will last for years into their education. It is unfair to them in extremis. Finally, I'd like to add this. Our community has seen a lot of negative commentary in regard to schools, teachers, and the Green Bay administration. I would like to go on record as stating that my children's health the health of my students and the health of my fellow teachers is and should be more important than anything else in this discussion. It is more important than inaccurate declarations that the common flu kills more people than COVID. It does not, according to Frederick Medical College of Wisconsin. It is more important than old survey results that are months old and from a time when the rate of infection had not yet climbed to today's rate. It is more important than the spurious allegations that have gone on in social media saying teachers are not willing to work harder than they've ever worked before to make sure our children are educated in an unparalleled time of systemic challenges. Margaret, you have about our a minute Our school left. community's health and safety is more important than all of these things. As far as I'm concerned, and for my children, and for my students, and for myself, and my coworkers, one child, or one teacher, one administrator, one staffer contracting COVID due to a premature return to normal is just one too many. So please vote on the side of safety, vote to protect our students, staff, and staff. Vote to accept the administration's recommendation that we begin the year virtually. I know that we will do an amazing job with our community's children, no matter how we teach them, but let's teach them safely. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. I appreciate your time this evening and you have a good rest of your night. You too. Bye bye. All right. President Van and Hoover, I'm going to kick it back over to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you giving me that uh, little respite. Um, I'm going to propose that we just take a, a five minute break um, just to stretch our legs. Anyone needs to use the restroom and then we'll come back uh, with the rest of the list. Um, so uh, let's come back just a minute or two after eight. Sounds good. A reminder, the stream will still be live. So please mute your microphones and uh, potentially turn off your videos.
as people are coming back from break, uh, I'll just remind everybody again, um, we're taking uh, our calls in the order that we received them on the website, uh, about 80 people who had signed up to speak. Um, if you are waiting for your turn to address the board, uh, please have your phone uh, near you with the ringer on. Uh, the call will be coming from an out of state number, certainly a number that you don't recognize. Um, if we don't get through to you the first time, uh, we're marking it on the list and we'll call you the second time uh, through once we get uh, through everybody. Uh, we've taken around 30 calls. We're on number 50 or so on the list. Uh, so about 20 numbers that we'll try to recall at the end. Uh, we're, we are limiting speakers to three minutes just because of the sheer volume and the number of people who are waiting. Also board members uh, won't be interacting and sharing uh, feedback or asking follow-up questions, but certainly we can do that by email um, or by phone uh, in the next day. All set to get rolling again, Eric? Yep, yep, Josh. Okay. Let's jump right back into it. There might be a little bit of a delay as uh, Josh is calling the next person on the list if it goes to voicemail. He's just uh, going to the next name and again, we'll call those people back. So if there is a very delay here uh, like this, it's just a matter of trying to go to the next person. So thanks for your patience. Felt like we had some momentum there for a minute. We took a break and we lost it. Don't take it personal, Eric. <laughs> this happened to you too when we transitioned. Four or five <laughs> Hi, Shaylin, can you hear me? I can. This is Eric with the Green Bay School Board. Appreciate you taking the time to share your feedback with us. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then I'll give you about three minutes. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, my name is Shaylin K. Weiland. Um, I live at 3912 Lloyd Street, and I am the mother of an 11-year-old child going into sixth grade. Um, my husband and I are both essential workers. I'm a nurse and he's a garbage truck driver. We've been working the whole time. We have long hours and we work until 5.30 to 6.30 at night. We also have an eight month old at home. 
At the end of last school year, my daughter suffered horribly. Um, she is not a virtual learner. She's a fantastic student at school, but not at home. She was crying in her bed at night, um, missing her friends, and uh, she didn't know how to cope with her feelings. Um, I have a lot of anger outbursts. Um, and and just she didn't know how to cope. She needs the structure, routine, discipline, and socialization that school provides. The idea of virtual and even blended learning is an option, but it most definitely will create more problems than it will solve. There is no way my 11-year-old daughter can sit home alone three to five days a week, 10 and a half hours a day, trying to navigate online schooling. Sixth grade is the foundation of learning how to read a textbook, how to pull and extract information from the material, how to take notes, and how to study for tests. How is she supposed to learn this from home? What happens if she has technical difficulties and no one is home to help? We have no family to rely on in the area. The internet by us is super slow and it's unreliable. There's only one option for a provider out here. By the time I get home from work, take care of my eight month old, get her in bed, make dinner, get ready for the next work day. It's nine o'clock at night. That would be the time that I would have to sit with her and help her with her homework and answer her questions and make sure she actually did what she was supposed to do for the day. Are your teachers prepared to then get an onslaught of parent emails at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night with questions because it's the only time of day we have, not to mention time on the weekends? One this is not a functional doing. solution. Okay. Have you ever thought of the repercussions of this, this decision on homes with parents working and single parent homes? We need to work. There is not enough time. You're basically giving us two options. We pay our bills and work and sacrifice our education of our child, or we quit. One parent quits the job and stays home, bringing on more difficulties, like losing your mortgage, losing your home. Um, not being able to pay for anything. Right now, you will see an increase in foreclosures, an increase in homelessness, an increase in badger care, food stamps, utility bill aid, other community programs, because I'm, our family is not the only one. There's thousands of others um, that will be put in this situation. Child care is also an issue. There's just simply not enough available in our community. The demand far exceeds the supply. Multiple families can't even afford this. Also, the daycares cannot help the kids do their schooling throughout the day, leaving it to the parents at night. Hey, this Lynn, is supposed I'm, to be I'm, for the safety. I'm sorry, that's no. the end of your three minutes. So I want to appreciate you sharing that's your fine. comments with us. Thank, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Jeff, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, this is Eric Van Hubel with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for your time to call. Uh, if you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, I'll start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. Yes, good evening. My name is Jeff Stroman and I live on Roscoe Street at Green Bay. I have two boys that are in Beaumont Elementary School. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, guys, to, uh, to hear me speak tonight. All right, so I just want to echo a lot of what has been said already. Um, as a parent, having to go through the spring time frame after spring break, where I know it was hard for our families. Uh, kids didn't really get an adequate time to say goodbye to their teachers. Um, my youngest, who will be in first grade year, missed his kindergarten teacher by about a half an hour on the school pickup time, and uh, he was pretty devastated. You know, my uh, oldest son got to see his teacher at the, the pickup time. And, uh, but still, I think, for my family, where we're coming from, a lot of those that have called are essential workers like myself. So I work and I'm a wife works for a local bank. And uh, we know from the spring interactions, um, we had to essentially rely on my parents. I'm fortunate enough to have a parent who is retired. And so they took my kids to their house. They live in a rural area that has internet. And so the some of their work and my dad did all he could to keep the kids focused on their learning environment. Um, but where we're going into this fall, we understand, you know, the virus is out there. Um, my family's masking and being responsible, you know, social distancing. Uh, but when it comes to the learning environment, my kids are not going to be successful with that. Um, but watching Minecraft videos on the computer or a Chromebook, and we know that's not really permissible. 
Um, we're concerned that the structure that uh, will be in place will not be able to support their environment, that my kids will work better in a classroom and learn better with their peers. Um, definitely understand there's going to be added complexity in the classroom when it comes to social distancing and measures to take with their health. Um, but also my concern is for the delivery model. Um, I haven't heard anybody really touch delivery of the learning will work or how, even how the summer school did work. I opted not to have my kids in summer school. So I don't know if it's going to be the same platform. Um, but right now I know when it comes to the speed, the pace of for kids, it takes time to develop. And I don't think Green Bay Area Public is really ready for learning. They might be there closely. Um, I think we have some tremendous teachers and by no means am I pointing any fingers at teachers. I think we have some incredible educators out there. My kids are privileged to be around some of them at Beaumont. And so we do definitely appreciate the work that they are doing to get ready for mobile delivery. But I don't think virtual learning is really something that One minute, you guys Jeff. support. Uh, with that, the other part of it too is the financial burden as well. Thankfully, my wife and I can both work. Um, but there's going to be that call. We have to decide if we're going to allow dad to be the primary educator of our kids during the school year for virtual learning, or if one of us needs to dump our income and to go fully into teaching and support the environment. Um, with that, we may have to also include an added expense for upgraded internet service because of virtual learning, the video part of it. I will not be able to adequately do my job from home, even though I do work from home with the internet speeds we can have. So there's added financial cost to parents, the time, and just the overall strain that I think we're not ready to be fully in that mode yet. And I would definitely prove more hybrid model for my kids to learn in, if not all week in-person classes as they're used to going through. So thank you guys again for the time. Mr. Murley, welcome to, uh, or, yeah, Murley, welcome to Green Bay. Um, I'm sorry, this is our first interaction. I appreciate your guys' time here tonight and the full response that did get to my email. So thank you guys for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate the uh, appreciate your comments. Hi, Debbie, can you hear me? Yep. This is Eric Vanden Heuvel with the Green Bay School Board. Appreciate you taking the time to call. Um, if you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then I will start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, um, my name is Debbie Rainier. I live at 914 Day Street in Green Bay. I have um, two daughters, a fifth grader, and gonna be a freshman at East. Um, the online learning this spring was very difficult for both of my daughters. Um, and they both had friends that dropped out of doing school because they struggled with online learning or they had more responsibilities because they were at home and not at school. Um, I do vote for the in-person. I know my freshman is very, very much hoping to be in-person or at least hybrid. Um, I worry about her mental health if she's not at least hybrid because she's just struggling so much with not seeing anyone, not having that social interaction. Yes, she does talk to her phone, friends on phones and they, you know, video chat or whatever, but it's not the same. You know, they need that in-person interaction. And my fifth grader doesn't have a way to really reach out to her friends. Um, so she doesn't even get that. And she, my fifth grade had an incredible fourth grade teacher last year, and he did great with videos and trying to find time for those kids to chat with each other on Zoom or whatever media, um, but it still caused kids to drop out. They just, it's hard for them to pay attention and stay into it and want to learn. And as she would say, we're, we were not good teachers. We didn't replace her teacher. She struggled with having us teaching her versus having her actual teacher being there and answering her questions and um, giving her answers. Um, my and 
my daughter oldest is going to get into the fine arts. So with her not being able to so much of that, it's probably who knows what's happening with that. So she just needs to have that interaction with the music community and the, um, you know, choir teacher and the, you know, obviously they're not doing musical anytime soon, but just the community of school, you know, the friends and seeing them and um, they, that's all. I just really think that kids need this for their mental health to be able to be at least a hybrid where they can see their friends a few times a week. That's all I have. Thanks so much. Thank you for taking the time, Debbie. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Bye. Jen, are you there? Hi, this is Hi, Jen. This is, this is Eric Vanderbilt with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for taking the time to call. If you could start by you. yourself and giving us your address, and then I'll start the three-minute timer, and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay. Good evening. My name is Jen Cates from 1603 Inspiration Avenue, New Franken, and I'm a parent of a high school student. Thank you to all of the district teachers, staff, administration, and work group members for all of their work on the forward plan. Thank you for surveying the parents, staff, and secondary students, and thank you to the school board for this opportunity to tonight to address the plan for the start of the upcoming school year. The forward plan clearly explains what the school year will look like under the current pandemic based upon the three models outlined in the plan. As a parent, I implore you to begin the school year under the blended learning model, sending students back to school in a reduced capacity. While just over 60% of secondary students surveyed shared that they did okay with online learning at the end of the past year, that is only representative of 32.5 of the district's secondary students. Students of all ages need personal interaction, which is not able to be achieved at the same level in virtual learning as can be achieved during in-person learning. Human connection is a large factor in an individual's mental well-being. If a student's mental health is suffering, there is a direct correlation to their educational experience. To see a glimpse of the effects that students experience during their isolation at the end of this past school year, one simply needs to view NUM, a short film created by Liv McNeil, a 15-year-old high school student. Students need equitable learning environments and routines that in-person learning provides. Students of all ages need to be in an equitable learning environment for their social and social emotional well-being, but more importantly, the physical well-being of all of the district students need to be considered. Students need a safe learning environment to learn in, for which many is not their home. That safe learning environment is found during in-person learning in their school building. If the district does not send students back into the school buildings until potentially after the first semester this next year, either in the blended model or on-site model, students will miss approximately 90 days of traditional education in a school environment during the upcoming school year. At the end of this past school year, students missed approximately 60 days. If students do not return to a traditional educational setting until the second half of the upcoming school year, students will have missed approximately 150 days in total, which is nearly an entire academic year for secondary students in the state of Wisconsin. Please minute, let that Jen, sink in for a moment. Please let that sink in for a moment. Nearly an entire academic year missed. The social, emotional, and physical well-being of our district students is greatly impacted due to the loss of in-person learning. 66% of students of parents surveyed and 80% of students, I'm sorry, 66% of parents surveyed and 80% of staff surveyed are willing to have school resume in some form in the buildings of the upcoming school year. Another item that the school board needs to look carefully at is the consistency of the models within the forward plan and the gating criteria. The criteria for the blended model is not the same gating criteria as for the on-site model. Please do use the county criteria when determining when to move from the district in the off-site model to the blended model. Again, I implore the school board to look at beginning the upcoming school year under the blended model by sending the students back at a reduced capacity, and then if needed due to the virus, transition to the off-site model. Thank you for this opportunity tonight, and thank you for your time. Great job, Jen, just under the wire. Thanks for calling, Jen. All right. Stacy, are you there? Yes, I am. 
Uh, this is Eric Van Inhoven with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for taking the time to call. If you could start by sharing your name and address, and then I'll start the three minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. All right. My name is Stacy Heim. I'm at 3168 Willow Road in Bellevue. There have been a lot of great talking points and data mentioned from other callers pushing for schools to open full time. Even though the survey was back in June, we still feel that the same way. This should be an option for those, the majority vote, to do so. Why is that option being eliminated? If many other businesses can be open and allow large gatherings, why can't our schools be open? The K through five students definitely must be in person. They don't comprehend virtual learning. They miss their friends, their teachers, the principal, Social and mental health development is essential. Most people wearing masks and gloves right now are doing more cross-contamination by touching surfaces and items and then touching their mask than body parts such as their eyes, mouth, and nose. The K through five students will play more with the mask than concentrate on learning. Our second grader cries every day thinking she may not go to school in fall. It may not be the same, but it will be something. My kindergartner needs the social interaction as he is very quiet and shy. This is already affecting their mental health. I am a dental hygienist and an educator. My husband is in correction. We are essential workers. Why is our children's education and social development not essential? I teach a hybrid blended college course, and many of those students have a difficult time managing virtual learning. How can we expect our younger students to handle virtual learning? What options are available for working parents, putting more families out of work? What about our bus drivers in the food service industry? There's no time to have family life when having to work, having to do the homework with our students after we just got done working minute, eight, Stacey. nine, 10 hour shifts. Um, and then eat supper and go straight to bed. Other concerns of students falling more behind, not just a summer slide. Kids who don't have the home support and learning, I see the need as I have tutored students at my child's school in reading and math. What about increased cost to families of the paper, the ink, the internet services? What about those underserved students and the dental services that have provided to them? Please vote for in-person learning for those students, parents, and teachers who choose to send their kids to school. Class sizes may be smaller as those who choose online will alleviate a lot of the crowding in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, Stacy. We appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. One more quick reminder that as uh, we're working through the list, uh, the call it'll come from an out of state number. Um, so please have your phone by you if you're still waiting for a call. We're getting down uh, almost into the 60s of the 80 people that registered. And then we'll go back to the people who we may have missed. But uh, if you are still waiting for a call, we will get to you. Kesha, are you there? Yes. Thank you very much for taking the time to call. This is Eric Van Inhoven with the Green Bay School Board. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then I'll start the timer minutes to address the board, and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, my name is Keisha Williams. My address is 1468 East Mason. 
Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54301. All right, go ahead. Well, the only thing that I wanted to voice my opinion about is um, having my son attend school um, when school start back. And I am really nervous about that because my son, is he just turned eight years old. Um, I don't think he's going to wear a mask. He doesn't like to wear them. And that concerns me because he's so very young. And I know he's not the only one that doesn't like to wear masks. So that concerns me. I would love for him to do uh, off-site schooling this year. Um, I know that is an option. So I just really wanted to speak up as a parent and um, voice my opinion and concerns about school opening up when it's in the fall. Keisha, thank you very much for taking the time to share that opinion with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for your patience, everyone. We have back-to-back -back, uh, voicemails. So going on to the, the next one. Josh, you're doing a great job. We appreciate it. And the third one go to voicemail. We've never had four yet, so fingers crossed.
Leah, are you there? Yes, hi, I'm here. You know, we're so, so glad you're here. This is Eric Manu, I'm the president of the Green Bay School Board. Um, if you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address. Um, and then I'll start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, thank you. My name is Leah Williams Carter and my address is 2153 Packerland Drive. And I have a student at King Elementary and Lombardi Middle School. And um, thank you for giving me this opportunity this evening to speak. Um, I think it says a lot that we are meeting virtually. It shows that we honor and respect our health. And I think that we should extend that honor to our children in the same way, um, that they are healthy and safe. I do realize that it's a tough decision for everybody in Green Bay. It was tough for our family, too, deciding whether to send our kids back to school, do a hybrid, or even consider homeschool. Um, and I've heard other comments that the children are low risk for COVID, but if that is true, um, the value of their life is very high. And I think that solutions for families who feel that they are struggling at home, some of those is issues and concerns could be addressed for additional support. Um, there are a lot of substitute teachers, CARAs, monitors, and even teachers who can maybe provide some type of additional support for teachers and students at a safe distance, like maybe home visits outdoors, um, and to also address the mental issue concerns or kind of on-site depression that some students have experienced. I also feel like it's really important for us to consider if students were to go back to school, the hybrid method, or even full time. And if there is a spike in COVID, then all these families would be in the same situation, trying to figure out what they're going to do with their students. Um, and to me, as a bit of encouragement, I think it sounds like some of these parents are doing a good job because teaching starts at home. And a lot of the daily activities that children do at home can be um educational as well so i think we have to be very okay have to be very proactive and exert ourselves in figuring out a safe way um, for the students to return um, because covid has really caught us off guard and changed our lifestyle so as much as we want to give our kids what they want and what they need um, we can't give them what they want if they're hospitalized or face a worse tragedy than that that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, Leah. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Bye. Leah saved us from four voicemails in a row, but now we've got four out of five. It's getting late. Angela, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, this is Eric Manninova with the Green Bay School Board. Um, thank you for taking the time to call. If you could start by uh, introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then um, I'll start the three minute timer and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, um, my name is Angela Kowalczyk Adrian. I live at 246 East Alloway Avenue. Um, I have a daughter that's going into third grade and um, I guess first of all, I wanted to just thank you for the opportunity to voice my opinion on the um, GBABS forward plan. 
I think you've all done a great job in developing this plan and considering all the options. And I am supportive of the recommendation to start virtual. Um, I know this is a really difficult decision. I understand it is a hardship for many families, but I think it's a wise decision for the schools to move forward, reviewing the available information from health officials and basing the recommendation on health information rather than um, economics or politics. Um, I feel confident that the forward plan will serve us well once it becomes safe to implement other in-person options. I think, I think a lot of people are concerned that you know, once you make a decision, that's it, then our kids are gonna be a year without um, school. And maybe they'll turn out that way, but I think that it's just safer to start virtual, see how things are going. Our numbers are so high here. Um, I think this not only protects the children, but I mean, there's a lot of faculty. It's the Green Bay School District is a large employer and you guys gotta make the right decision for your employees too. Um, I also think it's really hard with young children to try to get them to comply with mask wearing and distancing, especially the younger children. I mean, every year with so many colds and flus, we can't even get kids to keep good hand washing and covering their mouths when they sneeze. I can't imagine how we're going to get them to keep on masks and keep distancing. Um, the last point I wanted to make is that, um, you know, there's been a lot of comments about the survey results and it got me thinking that those survey results, those questions were asked so early in the year. It was June when we got asked. Um, I was even thinking how I answered and my opinion and how I would answer those questions now is very different after we've seen our numbers just explode in, the, in this country. I initially just wanted my daughter to go back to school. I think she does much better in person than virtual. Yeah, but minute, I think, uh, okay, I think that um, the plan that's come out really gives me confidence that there's going to be much better virtual learning and I just think it's better to keep children safe, keep employees safe and um, start out virtual. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us, Angela. We do appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you, too. Bye. Hi, Susan, are you there? I am. This is Eric Mananuba with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for taking the time to call. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address. I'll start the three minute timer and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Great, thank you. My name is Susan Smith and I live in Green Bay. Um, my husband and I have two children in elementary school in the Green Bay area public school system. And I'm calling, um, first of all, thank you for taking the time. I know this is a long evening and very draining, but thank you for listening to everyone who's calling in. I strongly urge the board to have an option of in-person instruction for at least elementary age children in the school district. And I wrote this earlier today, but I've been listening to all these comments and I would, I would add to that comment now that it sounds like from middle school and high school as well. My research that I've been doing has been focused on elementary age ch children because that's what we have. Um, I agree that there should be a virtual option or the offsite option for students, families, and staff who are at high risk and want to choose virtual. And I don't want that option eliminated for those families and staff members. However, an in-person model is not in place and the lack of such a choice is unacceptable for many families, including mine. My husband and I, as I mentioned, have two children in elementary school. And I was one of the parents who took part in the virtual focus group about a week ago or 10 days ago. And it was clear from that call that many parents on the call wanted a virtual option and a focus of the questions were on the virtual option. This focus, I think, ignores and ignored the needs for an in-person start to school for a minimum of four days for many students. The hybrid model proposed by the school district is also a majority remote virtual option and is not adequate for elementary students to learn. Remote learning for elementary students is not adequate education in many cases. And I think earlier tonight, we've had many um, elementary student parents talk to that, whether or not their, um, their children are special needs kids or if they're in kindergarten and first grade. I, our kids are in third and fourth and they know how to read. I have no idea how you would teach kindergarten and first graders how to read virtually. I just, I can't imagine how that would be done. 
Um, many studies, and I'm, I'm sending an email to the board that includes these studies, so I don't go through them in my three minutes, but one many minute, studies, one minute. sure, from, the, from um, the Harvard's Public Health School, the American Academy of Pediatrics, New, New England Journal of Medicine, recommend an in-person instruction for elementary students. Um, and so I will include those in the email that I, stand, I send. I strongly support a public school education, and we love our elementary school, the teachers, the principal. Um, but because of the inadequate options, meaning no in-person option for our kids, we will look at alternatives to ensure that our children are provided with a safe and adequate education. I worry about other young students and families who I've heard on this call earlier, working families, single parent families, um, families with, with kids with um, special needs that do not have other options. And I don't think the current plan does enough to help them. So tonight I strongly urge that the board add an option for an in-person school instruction, especially for K, for K through five, and also for middle school and high school as, as we've heard from other parents on this call. Thank you for taking the time for listening. Thank you very much, Susan. And we appreciate your, um, your feedback. Have a good rest of your night. All right, you too, thanks. Jennifer, are you there? I am, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. This is Eric Vanenhoevel with the Green Bay School Board. We appreciate you taking the time tonight. If you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then I will start the three minute timer and let you know when we have a minute left. Sounds good. My name is Jennifer Lynch. I live in De Pere, Wisconsin, and we are former Green Bay residents and currently open enroll into the district. I wanna thank you for taking the time to hold this listening session. Um, I'm an essential worker and mother of two former and one current student in the Green Bay School District. I spend my day interacting with about 30 to 50 people from the general public over the course of the day, including, including some students and families from the Green Bay School District. Um, I interact with them in a small room with limited to no social distancing, but I practice universal precautions and that includes masking and hand hygiene. And I'm certainly not unique in that situation. There's three points that I'd like to share with the group. And the first is um, to, to stress that you please take the time to understand the data that's being used to make these important decisions about our schools. It's important to know that that percent positive test benchmark that's cited in the plan um, by the administration is in no way a reflection of the rate of disease in this community. As explained in the link to the Johns Hopkins website in the, in the administration's presentation, the percent positivity is intended to determine the availability of testing. And that single data point is not as meaningful in Brown County because we do have untapped testing capacity. Um, on the other hand, a 5% positive rate of infection within the students at any one school certainly could justify closing any one school. And that's been cited by the CDC. The second point that I'd like to make is that the benchmarks listed for going to the hybrid and in-person school utilize state data. There's no reason we should rely on state data to make a local decision. And I would encourage using county data to determine those benchmarks. The third is um, a common theme that I've heard in a lot of the calls tonight, and that is concerns about the effect of remote learning on the children of Green Bay. One minute, anxious, adults, anxious adults may want elimination of risk for COVID-19, but that is not possible, not even with homeschooling. Recent articles published in the Journal of the American Medical Association and American Association of Pediatrics describe many of the risks of remote learning that we've heard so much about tonight, including social isolation, making it difficult to identify learning deficits, physical or sexual abuse, substance use, and depression. Our family's experience was that remote learning was like treading water for three months. Our children had reduced engagement and regardless of any Im promised improvements, had lowered their own standards for the upcoming school year based on this plan. Our family does not have an adult readily available to help with school as we both work full time. That leaves a significant amount of unsupervised time which tends to fill with sedentary and screen time. 
I hope the board will consider on balance what is best for the school community and not approve this plan for remote learning. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Jennifer. We appreciate your comments. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you, you too. Hi, Melody, can you hear me? Yes, I can. This is Eric Mananoul from the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for calling. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then uh, we'll start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. Thank you. I'm Melody Linsmeyer. I live on North Ashland Ave in Green Bay. Um, I'm thankful that you're giving me an opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm concerned about the fact a vote is being taken before a plan has been laid out for children of parents who work outside the home or are in special ed services. At the last board meeting, the public was told three models for school reopening were being worked on and town hall meetings would be available to families to, the, to give them an opportunity to speak when coming up with a plan. Yet before that even happened for full in-person um, school was taken off the table. I am concerned about the fact that this model has been taken off the table when considering our reopening. Um, I am also concerned that safety is being used as the sole reasoning for virtual learning when daycares have remained open throughout this pandemic. Um, I'm concerned that the reason of safety um, for our children is being falsely pushed. Um, in the United States, the CDC created standard precautions in 1985. Since that time, it has been adopted worldwide. The first three and the most important are hand hygiene, use of PPE, which includes gloves, mask, eyewear, and sometimes body wear. Number three is respiratory hygiene. Beyond that, the CDC has also made recommendations that fall under the second tier of precautions, known as the transmission-based precautions. That includes distancing, and masking patients. When I did the survey last June, I put in there that I would like to see my children back in school. You have one minute, with the, use of with the use of standard precautions and distancing. Using these models, there should be very limited risk to the teachers or the students because both teachers and children would be masked. I ask that you educate staff in implementation of standard precautions and reopen schools for our children. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melody. Appreciate you calling tonight. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Adam, are you there? Yep, I'm here. 
This is Eric Van Hoover with the Green Bay School Board. Appreciate you taking the time to call. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then I'll start the three minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay. Yeah, my name is Adam Pamperin. I'm at 1498 Rockdale Street. So uh, let me be clear. First of all, I am in favor of in class or in school yeah, learning. Um, the uh, sorry, top is one nuts here. The however, I I want to make it clear to the board here that uh, if you guys choose remote learning that you have some sort of plan in place for the faculty to follow and some sort of way to measure whether this is working or not. Um, it's kind of clear with the rest of the people who've spoken already. Um, my daughter did not do well with virtual learning. Um, some of the students, you know, some of the teachers I feel like just phoned it in and we were going to deal with it this year, and now we're we're looking at the same thing again this year. Um, I just I don't feel that there was enough structure. Um, you know, if we had some way of eight to nine is one class, ten to eleven is another class, something along those lines. But we we did not see that last year, and my daughter suffered greatly from it. So. That's all I have. Thank you, Adam, for taking the time to share those comments with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. So for reference, we have about eight, uh, eight numbers left on the list from the first time through. Um, we'll go back and try one more time on the number that uh, didn't answer. Um, so there may be some delays there as we go back a second time, but I uh, want to just make sure that uh, we give everyone a chance in case they missed us the first time around. So uh, a couple more here and then we'll try to catch everyone that didn't answer. Again, if you are waiting for a call, please make sure your phone is on, the ringer is on, expect an out of state number. Um, and uh, we'd like to hear from you before the night's over. Hello. Hi, Ms. Eric Manninhovo with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for calling. Thank if you. you. Could, if you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, I'll start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. My name is Misty Kocha. I live on Parkland Way in Green Bay. Um, I have some concerns. I have a daughter that uh, is going into kindergarten, um, and I'm also an essential worker, as is my husband. Um, and I understand that there's the teachers are concerned about their safety and their well-being. I understand that that's probably a big concept of people wanting to keep their children home. But I, as an essential worker, don't have that extra time to be spending with my children to do teaching. I would prefer to be spending with spending the time with my children to do other things, um, snuggling up to read a book, taking a walk, playing on the playground, things in that regards of things. Um, also, masking and social distancing for children of that age is going to, going to be impossible, and I don't agree with it, especially because they need that interaction. Um, I'm also concerned about the mental health and well-being of not only my, my child, but also of the other children. Um, like I said, my daughter is going into kindergarten. Um, she, from the time school stopped when she was in 4K, and up until today, she has repeatedly told me, I just want to go back to school. I want to see my friends and I want to see my teachers. Um, I think not having them co-mingled at recess and lunch is also a big thing um, because they are playing with neighbor kids that may be in other grades and it may teach them that they shouldn't be playing with other students. Um, MDs are telling us as parents to limit screen time for them. So a parent as myself, I don't allow a lot of screen time for my children. 
um, which did pose an issue in the spring when we had to do virtual learning. I finally gave up with my daughter after three or two weeks because she had no interest and she didn't want to listen to me in regards to her teaching aspects. Um, as a nurse, if I decided that I didn't want to go into work because of this COVID-19, I would be terminated from my job being an essential worker. I feel my child's education is an essential thing and it's, it needs to be considered that way, not only for my child, but for other people. Um, we need to make sure that we make them the productive members of society that they need to be in order to become what we've become as parents. So I hope you have all your information straight and that we can get an in-person thing set up for parents. Um, or at least have those options available. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Missy. We appreciate your feedback tonight. Have a good rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. Society that they need to be in order to. Erin, are you there? Yes, I am. This is Eric Van Hoogle with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for calling tonight. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, we'll then uh, start the three minute timer and I'll let you know when you have a minute remaining. Sure, my name is Dr. Erin Daniel. I live on Trojan Drive. I have a fourth grader and a sixth grader um, in the Green Bay Area Public Schools. I have written a letter and that went over all of the science portion of why I think that the children should be back in school um, full time would be my preference. Um, I did like the other suggestions where part-time school would be an option instead of just going two days per week. Um, with that option, I do believe that the students would have more congruency. I personally had a school like that. We called it, um, oh, it was split, split school where seventh graders went in that evening and eighth graders went in the morning. We didn't have enough, um, enough classrooms available for the number of students while we were building a new middle school. So that option is very viable. Um, I did put in my letter different, you know, possible techniques in order to try to wipe things down more frequently doing, you know, wiping doors and the desks, putting desks, you know, for people who are actively coughing when we have particular matter, the droplets is what is most um, contagious. Uh, for spread of different diseases and if we could social distance or have those children wear masks at the time of an active cough, um, obviously doing things like temperature screening uh, to make sure that we're not sending infected children to school would be also incredibly important. My children uh, did not do well with virtual learning. I went from having one child who absolutely loved school to absolutely hating it. Um, I am a single parent and I um, operate my own chiropractic office, so I have a lot on my plate. I've also coached basketball for both of my children, so I take an active role in their life and I don't personally have uh, the time to be teaching them full time as well as, uh, you know, serving my patients that is important as well. So it's very detrimental to to my household, but many households are, you know, in the same boat, even if a parent is, you know, staying home full time and they have been home full time, teaching four different curricula for four different students is very hard. I taught anatomy and physiology at NWTC. And so I am used to teaching adult learners. However, um, I do not have the qualifications to teach early, you know, childhood education. My son struggles with reading. Uh, I do vision therapy with him. I've worked on this a lot, but he needs extra help. And so having something for students, even if we do go virtual, where there could be more help involved would be absolutely fantastic. Um, a split day maybe also would be good for lamers as far as getting kids to and from school. Um, and so there's just a lot of factors. I know this is very difficult. I think we all agree that we're trying to do the best for everyone and if we could you know see that as we're all coming from a place of love and just trying to make sure that everybody is well taken care of and um, Aaron, I really good. think we can come to a good conclusion. Thank you very much Aaron. we appreciate your comments tonight. have a good rest of your evening. Thank you you too.
Angelo, are you there? Yes. This is Eric Van Hubel with the Green Bay School Board. Appreciate you calling. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, I'll then start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. Sure, thanks. I'm Dr. Angelo Kolakitis. I live off of Terra Marie Court in Green Bay. Um, I wanted to kind of speak as a virologist and a parent. So I, I've heard a lot of parents tonight talk about um, not being teachers and not being in that profession and not wanting to be in that profession. But I, I think some have forgotten that we are in a global pandemic. And when we look at the data with this virus and how most scientific organizations have come out and said, sure, let's reopen schools, but we have to do it when community spread is low. And so Brown County, unfortunately, is not a, a low community spread, it's actually a very high community spread. And so we have to deal with the conditions that we have right now. And so though online is not the best option by any stretch of the imagination, if we look at the countries that have reopened their schools, there's pictures of success, and then there's pictures of failure. And so the ones that successfully reopened their schools did so when there was very, very low amount of community spread. And the ones that didn't wait until community spread was uh, low are now seeing themselves in another lockdown situation. So I think that the Green Bay School District has it right as far as looking at the local conditions, having a benchmark of when in-person might be uh, an option versus uh, starting out online. And so I think that the rest of the schools um, in the area, the surrounding districts could learn something by listening to healthcare professionals and experts because even though we might not all be teachers as parents, we One should be caring, yeah, we should be caring about our children because while sure the death rate is low in children, it's only low until it's your child. And so if that's your child, I'm very sure that you would not want them to be at risk by going to in person school during a high community spread event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. We appreciate your comments. Have a good rest of your evening. Oh, sir, are you there? I am. This is Eric Van Den with the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for sharing uh, your comments with us tonight. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving your address, and then I'll start the three minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Sure, my name is Sarah Lou Loss and I live at 254 Lazar Avenue in Green Bay. Thank you so much for having me. I greatly appreciate the work of the Green Bay School District officials, the school board, teachers and staff in their commitment to educating our students. Um, we are um, all appreciating the enormous role that our schools play in the growth and well-being of our students. Um, I had previously believed that in-person school needed to happen and would happen for the sake of attending to the educational, social, and emotional needs of our kids. What has become clear to me is that as a whole, our community has not adequately adopted behaviors necessary to limit the spread of COVID. Um, that said, I have grave concerns about the well-being of our working families and at-risk students if in-person learning is not an option. We, uh, we do have numerous examples from the around, around the world of successful in-person learning. And what has allowed for this success was a commitment to safety on the part of students, families, and educators. 
So if in-person learning is to happen in our community, there will need to be a very strong commitment on the part of students, their families, um, as well as uh, staff at our schools. I would strongly encourage the district to work in partnership with public health to initiate an educational campaign that entails several things, including an emphasis on an understanding that no one comes to school if they're experiencing any symptoms of illness, as well as expected behaviors um, for in school, including physical distancing, masking at all times in the school, and frequent and thorough hand hygiene. I know that our teachers and support minute, staff, thank you. I know that our teachers and support staff are capable of incorporating creative and safe methods within these standards to keep students engaged in learning and physically active. Uh, we are all needing to learn new ways of conducting our family and work lives. And now is an appropriate time for us to learn a new way of school. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your comments. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Two more left and then we'll go back through. Carrie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for calling. This is Eric Vanden Heuvel with the Green Bay School Board. If you could start by introducing yourself uh, and then giving us your address, I'll start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. All right, thank you. Thank you guys for taking the opportunity to do this. I appreciate it. Um, my name is Carrie Kipkowski. I live at 3046 Beth Drive. Um, I am a single mom. Um, it has been a chore the last two months with the virtual learning. Um, summer school has been extremely hard for my daughter, watching the other kids on the virtual, not wanting to focus. Um, I'm taking it into consideration um, to do starting the school off-site learning um, just because my daughter does have an underlying heart condition that I can't take any chances with her. Um, given the COVID-19 and being in the hospital, the one thing I would like to say is that we do have to do off-site learning um, to get more of a structured plan to have it set up the way our kids would go to school with. Um, I would like to have the lesson plan sent to I know, to a house, get, you know, some type of paperwork, whatever that we'd be doing in school, just so that they would have the structured value of it. Um, I think that would help out tremendously. I know some of our, her summer school packets, we never got them. So that was a big um, thing, a big ordeal for us to get those packets. Um, I do work from home. I am an essential worker also. Um, the, I have the benefit that my parents, are retired so my mom has been doing all the helping of teaching so I can continue to provide for me and my daughter um, just take everything in consideration this is I don't think this is going in the way any way anytime soon and just I appreciate the help that you guys can give us as parents you know being the teachers and everything um, the school board so I appreciate everything Carrie, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for sharing your comments with us so late at night. Uh, we do appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye. Maria, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello, this is Eric Vandenhoeve with the Green Bay School Board. Appreciate you taking the time to call. If you could start by introducing yourself and then giving us your address. I'll start the three minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Okay, my name is um, Maria and my address is 629 St. Martin Court. And I just have something quick to say, and that is that um, I understand two points of view. And that is that I do work at a school. It's not in the Green Bay School District, but it is in another district. And we will 
I was told that we will start school. But being a mom of a special needs child with that does require more needs for his academic learning and having a child that is in fifth is going to be in fifth grade, I see both sides to where it would be okay for my daughter who is not special needs to do online learning. And I see that as a good thing for her to not, for her, it would be okay to be at home. But my son who is special needs, I feel like it would be more beneficial to have him in person. So maybe if there would be some sort of way to have the kids that do need the special education in person to have them be in person and have the kids that don't need the special education be at home, I feel that that would be very beneficial. Even though other parents wouldn't understand that, I feel like as a special needs um, parent that I understand both sides to where I would understand that my daughter is okay at home and my son who needs more help to be able to be in person. Thank you very much, Maria. I appreciate you sharing uh, that perspective with us. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to do one more try now, going back to the top of the list. Eric, I counted about 30 to 35 that we didn't reach that were piloted yellow. Okay. is possible that uh, maybe these people changed their minds. Maybe they didn't answer. Uh, remember that if, if you are still waiting for a call, it'll come in from an out-of-state number. So please answer, have your ringer ready. Um, but if these people have, have decided that they don't want to call, we may just be here for a minute while Josh goes through. I'd rather give them the benefit of the doubt uh, to see if we can catch anybody. Um, so please be patient. Uh, I'll chime back in if we don't have a call here for a couple of minutes just to remind people, but um, we'll let Josh do his thing. Again, Josh, really appreciate uh, everything you've done tonight and going through this one more time. Uh, it's appreciated. Tipuanita? Hi. Hi, this is Eric Vandenhove with the Green Bay School Board. I appreciate you calling. I'm glad we got through to you. Um, if you could start by introducing yourself and uh, giving us your address, and then I'll start the three minute timer. Hi, my name is Tipuanita Dutta, and I am from Green Bay Deep Air area. My address is 1609 Silai Plain. And my, both my kids, my younger one will be going from this year to Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci School, and my daughter, she goes to the Leonardo Da Vinci School. So me and my husband both work full time. Uh, we are fortunate enough that we get chance to work from home as of now because of all these situations. And the thing that I'm more concerned about is how you are planning to keep the student curriculum more oriented to kids need because uh, we are really keeping our health in above and all anything like we cannot compromise on our health issues that is our primary focus but at the same time every kid is different in respect to their need every kid even in the same school every student i used to be a lecturer so i know every kid works differently how you are going to work like what are the measure even if we are taking online classes or blended classes no matter that need that will be a really challenging thing especially with my little one i can totally get the vibe with the summer school and all that he he listens to one person where he needs to be directed, like do this, do that. 
and that mental development where all the kids talk together, they chat together, they have fun time, good time. School is not about all about studying. It is more than mental development and mental growth. So I'm really concerned, like what are your plans and what are you thinking about all these aspects that a school, it's a big thing. School can never be done in home. But at the same time, I'm afraid I choose for off-site classes like remote learning because I cannot take risk of sending my kids to school. But I really would like to know what are your measures and what are you thinking about it? Thank, thank you. you thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank, thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Sure. Hi, Blair. Hello. This is Eric Vanderbilt with the Green Bay School Board. Appreciate you taking the time to speak with us tonight. If you could start by mm -hmm. introducing yourself. Can you hear me, Blair? Yes, I can. Okay, if you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address. I'll start the three minute timer and let you know when you have a minute left. Oh, I wasn't really, I, I didn't know I was supposed to talk. Oh. <laughs> would, would, you, would you do you have any comments for us no i was i was under the impression that it was kind of just like you listen in and kind of under to understand what was going to be decided on tomorrow oh i see so you thought you were registering yeah sorry yeah no that that's fine i'm glad we uh, had an opportunity to connect and uh, the school board meeting will be tomorrow at five o'clock Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too.
I'm trying to think if there's a quicker way to, if someone is out there waiting phone call rather than call one by one, if someone could let us know. I don't know what that is though. Eric? Yeah? They can email me. I'll watch for it. Just I mean, they can, email, they can email somebody or give an email address and maybe they can just email in that they want to talk or they're waiting to be called on. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, that, I mean, why, right? don't, why don't we do the general board email that we'll sure. all get it and see it. Yeah. So if you are still watching this video and you are waiting for someone from the board to call you, you've already pre-registered, um, you can send us an email at board of education at gbaps.org. If you send an email there, you, meaning you've already registered to speak, you're waiting for a phone call the second time around. Josh, if you want to keep making phone calls for now, you can, but that might uh, speed up the process if anyone is still waiting to speak. Yep, I will keep dialing. These take longer because they have to go through all the rings and to the end of the voicemail before. Right, the, yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I know sure. that I, I got a message from somebody who is waiting for a call. Um, her number was listed wrong uh, when she spreadsheet, so I updated it. Um, it's number 67. So okay. I know if you call number 67, she should answer. I'm uh, sharing my screen too with that email address. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Again, we're uh, waiting for a call if you've registered and we missed you the first time around, uh, rather than call through the 30 numbers who uh, uh, we've missed the first time. Um, send us a quick email, let us know, and we'll, we'll click, quick zip to you. Hey, that worked. Did you get an email? Yeah, people are watching. <laughs> we had a lot of people watching tonight. I think we peaked at about 1500 people live. Josh? Yes. Do you want, um, someone just sent an email with the phone number. Do you want me just to forward it to you? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Rhonda, I've got him here you on the chat on a back channel, so I'll, I'll send it to him there. Okay. You got Thanks. it. Do you want me to pop down to 67 quick, Eric, too? Yeah, that would be great. All right. And Josh, I just sent you the email that we got. Okay. Hi, Kristen. Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> glad um, glad uh, that you sent me that message. Um, so if you want to start by introducing yourself, um, giving us your address, and then um, I'll let, we'll start the three-minute timer. I'll let you know. Uh, when you have a minute. Okay. Left. Yeah, my name is Kristen Nyheisel. I live at 2511 Valley Heights Drive in Bellevue. Um, thank you all for your hard work and planning for the school year. I know no one was, pretty, you know, ready for this. Um, you know, COVID is scary. It's the unknown. But what we can do now is listen to our healthcare professionals and um, and just go by what we do know. I am an LPN at a pediatric clinic, and my husband works at a local hospital full time. I have a son going into first grade, and I don't believe that online learning is really going to work for these young kids. Um, 
this is the time where they need to build their social and emotional skills and start the building blocks for their for their learning that's just going to lead them through their whole life. Um, our experience last year wasn't really the best online. I ended up just buying workbooks and and trying to do it myself. Um, I only got about two weeks worth of paperwork from our school that didn't really last very long. Um, what are we to do when both of our um, both parents work? Is they're going to end up just sending their kids to daycare because we're essential essential workers and we have to go to work. Um, I don't think daycares are really the safest for our kids just because of how overcrowded it can be, not following CDC guidelines, um, being limited um, openings if all these kids are not going to be in school. Um, then parents are going to end up having to pick them up and trying to teach them right when they get home when they're exhausted from all that stimuli at daycare. Um, my husband and I just can't afford not to both work. So I'm really encouraging that at least K through five go back to school and learning um, with, with mask and trying to distance and stay safe and hand washing. I'm a little nervous with the hybrid um, model just because, again, when both parents work, if the kids go to school for two days, they're going to be end up going to daycare for the rest, which is going to increase their exposure risks and increase exposure to the other kids um, the next week that they go to school. I'm a little nervous for that. Okay. Um, I hear the teachers on here, and I couldn't help to remember how it felt when I had to go to work as a nurse being nervous, I'm going to bring it home to my to my family. Um, we're learning more and more about COVID, and um, I'm 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 feeling comfortable to send my kids to school um, with masks and distancing and and being as safe as possible. Um, it'll be a change, but I believe that the kids really really need it socially and the interaction to be engaged um, at least for the first month before the flu season hits and I'm sure schools will be closing because of all the symptoms. But um, I think parents should have a choice for at least K through five to pick. Um, um, what else do I have to say? I, but if you, I, oh, if for, for virtual learning, um, um, with that, well, yeah, know, I'm sorry, no, for, Kristen, I'm sorry, that's the end of the, your time. Oh, it's okay. Thank you for listening. Yeah, I appreciate you calling in. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Bye. David, are you there? I am. Yes, thank you for All being right. with us. Sorry we missed you the first time. Um, if you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then uh, we'll start the three-minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Sure, I'm uh, Dr. David Radosovich. I live on Cottage Hill Drive, and uh, I appreciate all the hard work you guys have been doing. I just wanted to express four thoughts about our reimagined education in the face of this sneaky, deadly virus. First, I want to thank Dr. Murley and his leadership team for carefully designing the plan on those guiding uh, principles. Now, while this plan certainly won't please everyone, it does take the steps to make us safer while providing a quality education in this new format. I want to thank you for listening to the medical experts who are working tirelessly to understand and control COVID-19. And I want to thank you for understanding every parent's concerns and personal burdens are very real. At the same time, thank you for understanding that not everyone's level of expertise in offering a solution is equal. Not everyone has a scientific or medical training to speak with equal authority. And thanks for knowing that COVID-19 is not the same as the common flu, and that if an outbreak occurs in schools, it will stress every hospital in the region. Our children can be asymptomatic carriers for days, even before we know they spread the virus. So we appreciate our kids learning about science, not being the actual science experiment, especially when they have been largely protected in isolation since March. So thank you also for understanding that the survey results referenced by so many people are likely to have changed since they were last administered. My second point, is that I want to say that I believe in our teachers who are working tirelessly to redesign the way they teach for impact. I'm thankful for them raising the bar in these trying times, um, and let's support them now so that they have, now that they've had the time to adequately prepare. And third, as a psychologist, I want to address this notion of resilience. 
you know, people have voiced real fears and heartbreaking concerns during these last few hours. We are not unique, though. You know, previous generations have gone through worse experiences than us having to manage off-site learning. As a community, we can do this. You know, we have capable and motivated teachers in our corner who are working hard to ensure the continuity of learning. So I know that our children are adaptable and resilient. That's what we teach as psychologists. But only if they are in a safe environment. So children can continue to learn and develop both emotionally and intellectually in this off-site format. So yes, oh, it will be hard. As, it's going to be hard to juggle this with work and family, but it's easier helping them out teaching than it is being a pallbearer at our funeral. So thank you for your well thought out plan. I'll finish with a quote that drives this home. You know, it is not necessary to change. Survival is not mandatory. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate your time tonight. Thanks. Have a good evening. Hello. Hi, Anna. Hi. This is How are you? Good, good. Thank you for uh, for sending the email. Uh, thank you, Rhonda, for that idea. It's we're getting a, a couple than just sitting here silently. Uh, this is Eric Vanden Heuvel, yeah. Green Bay School Board. Uh, if you could start by introducing yourself and then um, your address. Three minutes. I'll start the timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute okay. left. All right. Um, my name is Anna Costello. I live on Taft Street in Alloway, Wisconsin. My daughter attends Langlight Elementary. Um, first off, I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. I know it's probably been a very long night for all of you. Um, one of the things I really kind of want to point out, I've been listening to this all night and in speaking with other parents in the community, one of my biggest concerns is that we are so split as far as what is considered adequate social distancing or whether or not we should even socially distance at all. And I think bringing our children back to school in an environment where some parents are unwilling to or do not want their children to socially distance could be potentially catastrophic. And I know that may sound like an overreaction, but consider we haven't had the time to study how this affects children in schools. So we don't really know or have the data to guide us at this point. I think that until we can agree as a community on how we are going to properly socially distance, remote learning may be the best option. We need to be able to protect each other, and that includes our teachers and our parents and the elderly who are in our communities. So with that being said, I do agree with it. However, one um, thing I would like to ask is that there be more structure this time. My daughter did struggle. She is a special needs student. And one of the things she struggled with the most was structure. Um, she was used to that. I go to school at this time of day. Um, my school ends at this time of day. Um, I would like a bit of more of a formal sort of structure um, throughout this next semester or however long it takes for, you know, this to be over with or to be resolved. Um, another thing as far as consistency goes, I do think parents need to consider that if they go to a full-time model and COVID, there is a COVID outbreak in their school, they're going to have to yank their children back home. And that in and of itself can be very emotionally damaging. Also, I want people to keep in mind, as grave as this sounds, that losing a loved one, such as a parent or a grandparent, can be far more emotionally devastating than not being able to play with other children. Um, so I guess I'm going to end my statement there. I appreciate you giving me the time to speak this evening. Thank you very much, Anna. I really appreciate you uh, staying with us this late and, and sharing your feedback with us. All right, Have thank good, you. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye. Eric. Yes. Um, you've seen there have been several people that have emailed, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks. We're on it. Yep. No problem. I think we got three, three more right now. That one went to voicemail, Eric, number 19. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Um, 
you want to double check that number, I'll move on. Yeah. Leah, are you there? Hello, I am. Hey, Eric Van Anuel from the Green Bay School Board. Thank you for calling and hanging with us so late. If you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address, and then I'll start the three minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Thank you. Um, my name is Leah Jankel. I live at 2731 Creekwood Circle in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I am calling in regards to I am recently new to the Green Bay School District as a mother. I grew up here in the area uh, as a younger child and coming from the Pierce School District, it, can you hear me? Yep, I feel like ahead. there's a delay here. Oh, I found yep. it. Um, oh, you're okay. Coming from, <laughs> coming from um, with my daughter being six years old, we had just recently moved, built a house that we've been building. We live in an apartment. At the end of all things, there's been a lot of stuff going on with COVID and her just turning six. Um, myself changing from working in an office downtown to moving to have to accompany myself into an office in my home, taking care of her. Um, I'm very fortunate that I have a mother that has been in the school district and um, has her doctorate and has been teaching children her entire life. So I've been fortunate for that. But I want to know what is the school district looking at when it comes to teachers? I understand that there's a health concern, but this whole summer, I feel like everything has been more on the health concern other than looking at the curriculum of what they're going to be doing when it comes to if we are going to be teaching our kids virtually, what are we going to be doing for a curriculum if we're going to make it maybe not easy, but so that people that are at home having to work or having to be with their children that can't have their kids in child care and having, you know, the ability to be able to have I guess access to even internet or iPads and all those things so that we are able to make sure that the children are going to be able to continue the education. Um, you have one minute, my Leah. mother has also, my mother has also taught children from <laughs> um, China, India when she worked down in Florida doing it. I mean, she had taught curriculums when it came to worksheets and you know just simple things of connecting that there's no critical thinking and problem solving just having that over the internet when you need to have those hands-on things so I appreciate your time thank you very much thank you very much they appreciate it have a good night Jessica are you there yes I am Thank you for hanging with us. Sorry we missed you the first time. Um, if you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address. Uh, I will start the timer at three minutes and let you know when you have a minute left. Yes, my name is Jessica Day. I'm a paraprofessional at East High School. I live at 339 North Maple Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I am a parent and also a staff member of the Green Bay School District. Uh, my biggest concern is that um, my child who is disabled uh, looks at me every day and asks me if I'm going to be safe and is concerned about me being there for her in the future. I understand the importance of in-person learning and I, I know personally given her disability that she does struggle learning online. But personally, for me, the biggest concern is whether or not I'm going to be here for her. And I think that is her biggest concern when this is all over with. 
Um, I I know there may be uh, challenges and deficits in ter- in terms of of what they're learning and and maybe gaps and we may need to catch up. But ultimately, I think that is the most important thing is that we will be there for our children when this is all over and they have the opportunity to catch up as opposed to not having that opportunity. Um, Most definitely for my daughter, uh, besides being with her friends, which she talks about all the time and not being able to socially interact with her friends, uh, it would be more devastating and more emotionally traumatizing for her to lose her mother uh, than to not hang with her friends for a few months. So that's what I have to say. I appreciate everything everyone is doing, and I I understand both sides. But I do believe the, the safest thing is for everyone to stay apart for the time being. And thank you for the opportunity. Jessica, thank you for hanging with us so late. Appreciate uh, your comments. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. You too. Hello. Lisa, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Thank you very much for uh, hanging with us. Sorry we missed you the first time. If you could start by introducing yourself and giving us your address, and then I'll start the timer at three minutes. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Sure. So I am Siva Khan, and I live right here on Quail Ridge Drive. So I'm not really as prepared as other parents. I don't have stats, but I actually wanted to ask, why is a five-day in-person option not even being considered after we sold the surveys out in June? So my husband and I are both health care providers. We work 40 hours a week as essential workers. Has the board even given a thought that parents like us, how will we manage virtual learning or even a hybrid model for that matter? Virtual learning that we did in spring of this year, honestly, was a sheer torture. I feel like I was teaching my kids more technology and PowerPoint more than math and science. We both might be very educated individuals, but I am not a teacher. I repeat, we are not teachers. I have learned, I have more respected teachers more than anything this year because we cannot do what you guys do. Parents like us eventually resorted to daycares who have increased their prices exponentially. Of course, because they can. So how is it any different from me sending my kid to school or a daycare? I also want to ask that why are we not considering our neighboring school districts, Ashwabhanan, Harvard Swamiko? They have, they have results, you know, given out their plan a month ago. Secondly, an hybrid option I feel is more detrimental. How can parents who work 40 hours juggle between pick and drop the days our kids go to school? What if we have more than one child? I mean, how exactly can two uh, parents help two kids go to school in two different timings? I just think that's going to be near impossible. Lastly, I've read that teachers are feel not feeling safe about coming to the school. I just ask, I'm a healthcare provider. I was never even given that option. For me, if I don't go to work, I lose my job. So I really urge that the district considers parents like us who have no other resort but to send our kids to school. Again, I appreciate you all listening to us and thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Shiza, I appreciate it. Again, glad we were able to finally connect. Have a good night. You too, thank you. Based upon the emails that we've received, I think we have one more phone call. Um, Again, if you are out there waiting for a call and you've registered, uh, please send an email to Board of Education at dbaps.org. Unless we get anything in the next few minutes, this will be our last call. Molly, are you there? Sorry, Eric? Eric, I'm here. Remind them again about the out-of-state number, just one more time. Yep, so uh, if you do get a call from us, it's an out-of-state number through the Zoom system. So um, please have your phone ready uh, if you're waiting for a call. Uh, Molly, if you could start by introducing yourself, giving us your address. I'll start the three-minute timer. I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Hi, thank you. I'm Molly Myers, 526 West Eagle Terrace. Uh, I have two kids, one who's going to be starting kindergarten this fall and then one who's going to be a senior in high school. Um, I want to 
echo the uh, why is there not a distinction between the K through five and six through 12 going back to school. I think the priority should be getting our K through five kids back in school. And I think the options that you laid out, the virtual on-site hybrid um, aren't adequate. I, I think the priority and one of the choices should be K through five going back first and developing science-based criteria for how that might happen. I think K through five is different. You can keep the kids all in one classroom, um, more, that, more so than you know, middle and high school where they're moving around to different classes and, uh, and then also providing you know, that support for working families. If, if, there, if it is gonna be the virtual or the hybrid model for our K through five families, um, we need to provide some support for working parents. We need better communication moving forward. I honestly wasn't anticipating this. I know many other families uh, weren't anticipating this as an option and um, are scrambling right now and kind of want to know, you know, what we should plan on moving forward and, and need some support. The other point I want to bring up is the um, is the gating criteria for on-site. So right now, it's listed for when community transmission is considered low for Brown County. I went on the website and looked at the map, and currently two counties in Wisconsin are listed as low, and those COVID counts are zero and one. And I know that's just like over the past two weeks. Well, that just seems overly seconds. stringent. Thanks. It just seems overly stringent and not realistic. And I just would like some explanation on why um, that gating criteria is necessary and if that's going to continue to be the criteria for on site. Um, and why is there different <laughs> gating criteria for? Uh, the blended versus the um, on-site, you know, five days a week. I, but that should be the same, and it should be county-based. Uh, and I think that's all. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Molly. We appreciate you calling. Have a good rest of your evening. All right. Um, with that being said, I don't see any more emails. So I believe that that will be the end of our virtual listening session. Um, I want to thank uh, all the board members tonight, uh, the staff who came in on a Sunday to help facilitate this. Um, certainly thank you to everyone who took the time uh, to call in and speak to us tonight. All of that feedback was very valuable. Um, also just want to, to mention, and I think uh, all the board members and uh, staff are in this boat. We're receiving a lot of email feedback. We're all doing the best that we can to try to respond. Um, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of emails. So uh, please know that we're, we're reading them, trying to respond the best that we can. Uh, if we don't respond, it doesn't mean we did not read your email. Um, and then final reminder is a special board meeting tomorrow at five o'clock. Uh, we'll be right back here um, to uh, hear some more information and then have a discussion and make uh, a vote tomorrow. So, um, Eric, anybody... we, need, we need a motion to adjourn too, don't forget. Oh, thank you. Can I make a comment before we do that, please? Yep. Okay, uh, just to clarify, to make sure that people understand, we are not taking this vote in closed session. I've had a few people reach out and ask me that. So can you just maybe yep, touch on that? Yep, I, yep five o'clock will be uh, right here, live on YouTube, uh, all discussion. There will be no closed session tomorrow. Thank you. All right, uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Wait, can we do Aye. that? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Josh. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Josh. You're the best. You have been watching the Green Bay Area Public School District's Board of Education meeting. Please visit the school district's website, www.gbaps.org, to view the program again. If you cannot fully access the information on this video, please let us know the accessibility issue you are having by calling 920-448 2025 or by email at communications at gbaps.org. We will try to provide the information to you in an alternative format and or make the necessary improvements to make the information accessible.